Welcome, welcome, welcome to Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the Inner Beauty Movement. We're all about helping women, uh, high-powered women, successful, beautiful women reconnect with their feminine power core in their essence while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, that sounds like your jam, that sounds like... Uh, it resonates with you. Definitely give us a follow. We'd love to have you a part of our family here at Inner Beauty TV and definitely download our app, Feminine Elite Society app, which is available on Google and Apple stores. Shout out to my sister, Janesta Coleman. She's uh, sent me a $2 super chat here. She says she is listening from work as usual. Good afternoon, my good sister. I love you so, so very much. And shout out to all of you on YouTube and other platforms who are here supporting me and are here to hang out with me for an hour or so to discuss a few things and I, there's a couple of things I wanted to go into before we get deep into the topic today but I do want to say thank you to those of you listening to me live and on the replay those of you sharing liking and spreading the word about us over here I appreciate each and every one of you and shout out to everybody on the other platforms who check out the replays I thank you so so very much and in this day and time where everybody's fighting for listeners, I appreciate Eve, uh, the people that, you know, stick by and listen. I appreciate that. Shout out to Brother Henny, uh, Phineas Henshaw for the $10 Super Chat. See the tip jar afternoon. Thank you so, so very much to my supporters. I appreciate you so much. This conversation today came to me a couple of days ago because um, a lot of women want to know, am I wasting my time? Which is one of women's biggest fears in the dating arena, in the marriage market is being with someone, investing in a relationship, and they are concerned about their ROI. Am I going to get a return on my investment? And here we focus on return on investment being marriage. So. Oh, that's one of the things that women here are concerned about, and they definitely want to make sure that they're not wasting their time because as women, our time is valuable. Our time is of the essence. We don't have a lot of time to waste on men who don't want a future with us. Um, for women that are enjoying dating, they're in a phase, they're doing them. Marriage is not a priority. They don't really feel pressed about marriage or an end game but when you do want a family you do want a future it's absolutely important to understand uh what's happening and what's on his mind and how he sees you and how he how he views you is very very important let's talk about funding your soft life um We've been talking about the soft life for quite some time. Um, and there has been definitions, different definitions. My concern was that it wasn't um, too much emphasis on, it wasn't too much emphasis on luxury and um, the, you know, the finer things in life. We wanted to make sure that it was self, um, <clears throat> self-assuredness. It was about reclaiming our self-esteem and, easing up on life and easing up on ourselves and not taking on more than we can handle our bodies can handle learning our bodies learning our stress points our pressure points and kind of giving our bodies break and a break and making sure that our bodies are well and that is a healthy way to view soft life and then there was factions of the movement that focused in on experiencing the finer things in life which is quite all right. I've been some, I've included some articles in the description box below that I think that you will find interesting. And I wanted to tell the ladies that we get a lot of pushback when we start talking about marriage and we start talking about relationships and understanding men and developing man keeping skills. We get a lot of pushback. But ladies, I have to be the bearer of bad news. You either understand men or you have to fund your own soft life. And I can't help but 
you know, um, tell you about the times that I've made travels and all of the single women that I saw when I was traveling. And it's nothing like paying for your own travels, right? I understand that for a lot of women, that's empowering to pay for your own jewelry, pay for your own shoes, your own clothes, buy your own house, buy, pay for your own trips. I understand that that's empowering for some women. But for those of us, it's nothing like having a man come home with a box from Tiffany or a man come and say, hey, I'm taking you to Paris or I'm taking you on that that trip that you've always wanted to go on. It's nothing like posting from around the world on a trip that your man took you on. It's nothing like wearing a pair of shoes that your man gave you. My man, my man, my man bought me some pairs it's nothing like that and ladies if we're honest we know that's true if we all went out to lunch let's say we're out to lunch right now and we all say hey you know i'm going to ski on the alps yeah you know i've decided to book me a cabin uh in vale and i'm going to go skiing and yeah girl yeah it's nothing like that right but it's nothing like saying my man booked us a trip to Vail. Now, to some of you who don't value relationships and that's not where you are, you don't see the value in that, especially if you're young and you're out and about, and you're doing your thing. But as you start to appreciate money and appreciate how money, what it's for and how it grows, and it's nothing like having a money, uh, a man, <laughs> treat you to those things i'm sorry it's nothing like a man saying i got it it's nothing like that and that's not exactly what men that's not the only thing that men are good for let's be clear however that is one of the perks of being with one is that especially if he's a producer he's competent he's high caliber he understands women and he understands how to make you happy and one of those things uh, about women is we like the finer things in life. We like to be spoiled. Uh, we like the good things. No matter what your race is, where what corner of the earth you are on, you like the finer things in life. And I hate it when they try to relegate it till it's only one race of women that like to be treated nice. That's a lie from the pits of hell. I don't know what magazine you pick up that you don't see all races of women wanting jewelry, wanting designer clothes, wanting uh, houses and trips. And so let's let's not pretend like it's one race. We're not going to play those games. What we will say <laughs> is that women, women, period, we cost a lot of money just for basic maintenance. I mean, every month we need toiletries right um when we walk out of the house we need certain makeup items even if we do the the bland uh as my my play brother calls it ash face even if we do that look there's still some maintenance for ash face right you can't just walk up and have all kinds of crust and all kinds of stuff coming off your face you have to be a little bit kept right and so that costs money and the products for women cost money so any kind of woman you get no matter what race she is whether she speaks english french portuguese Italian, it doesn't matter women cost money right so with that being said there aren't uh but a handful of women that just don't care about how they look what they eat where they go and things like that and the more successful women get, the more they are exposed to things. If they did not come from money and don't understand money already, then once they obtain it through hard work, they are used to that and they want to maintain that and keep that going, right? And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But please understand, ladies, if you want a producer, like I like to call them competent men. We've talked about masters of the universe on my channel. I like to call them masters of the universe because they master pretty much everything they touch. They work hard. They have a work ethic that's out of this world and they're not motivated by just women. They have an internal motivation and women just come to them. They are producers. They are competent. 
Then you have your hedge fund, blue chip type of guys. Then you have your guys who work hard. They're not rich or anything like that, but they do want to take care of families and things like that, which are going to be the majority of men. Whichever category you get a man from, if you want him to put in on that soft life, then you have to learn how to play the game, ladies. And I can't help but get disgusted by all of the content that's telling women that they literally can do what they want. I don't know men with money, and I know quite a few, that, that are successful. Like, they're not hurting at all. And I'm, and I'm not talking about men who got rich off of social media. I'm talking about men who, in real life, have money. They don't want to be with women who want to do their own thing. And we can see this play out with celebrities, right? They're kind of like our little guinea pigs to like watch. We They're in a fishbowl. We can watch them mess up, okay? And we've seen them get with successful men and totally fumble the ball. We've seen this, right? And they're beautiful. They're rich, right? Um, and they totally fumble the ball because they have a mindset that I can do what I want. And I'm I'm not saying that... Um, men control everything and just bow down and be submissive to any and every man and your opinions don't matter and I just want to rain on your parade. No, I absolutely want you to get the finer. I want you to get what you want in life, whether that's the finer things in life, whether there's a house with two bedrooms, two baths, a picket fence, a dog and a cat and a, a baby, whatever it is for you. Whether you just want to work every day and just be a, your lone wolf by yourself and travel the world by yourself as a single woman, whatever that is, I want you to have happiness. Just understand if your happiness is a man paying for your soft life and paying for the finer things in life for you, then you can't listen to people tell you you can literally do whatever you want. And this is why spaces like that will always be huge because women will always want shortcuts they want shortcuts to great things they want shortcuts to that life they want shortcuts to that man to that relationship they want shortcuts and I'm here to tell you there are no shortcuts especially now the economy is acting crazy globally um, we're, we're watching real time, a shift in how money is earned in the first time in years. And I'm talking about in human history, we're seeing that wealthy people are, uh, for the first time. And I want to say human history, but I won't go that far, but I will say in human, in the last 200 years, we're seeing the shift the money transfer used to be old money to old money, but now we're seeing more millionaires and billionaires created that did not come from money. So it's a lot of space and opportunity to see some real money. However, ugh, women's mindset has got to adjust. And I hate to be the one to say it because that makes me unpopular, but hey, it's the truth. And you have regular guys out here saying, this is what I want. This is how it is. And this is why we have success over here. And the women who um, allow me to mentor them, allow me to be their Naomi, um, as Naomi got it, Ruth, in that vein, I, I, I put you in the right direction. And I know a lot of people have, some people have a problem with strategy, but I say, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. It's like it, without one, you're kind of walking around in the dark, trying to figure out what sticks. You're kind of throwing things at the wall, trying to see what sticks. And what you're going to find out is that the world is adjusting and men are not as stupid as you think they are. And some of the things that women have been doing for like the last I don't know 50 years to get men and keep men it's not working anymore and men are saying you know this is what I want and I'm not talking about dust I don't talk about dusties so so this isn't a space for dusties I'm talking about the men that most women desire successful men Workhorses, competent men, right? Masters of the universe, blue chip guys, successful, high powered white collar guys, average white collar guys, entrepreneurs, ambitious men. Those men have standards, 
And I'm not talking about the guy that mops. Shout out to him because we need that, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the guys that every woman on social media is claiming that she wants. Now, if that's not you, that's cool. But to the women that want those men, like I told you last week, it's competitive. Shout out to Phineas Henshaw for the $5 super chat. Appreciate ya. What happens when I am with a woman that says she wants that but rejects it anyway? Um, are you referring to the soft life? Not sure. Type, type in the chat what you mean by that. I'm not sure. But generally speaking, um, ladies, it's, it's okay to want the soft life. Just understand that you can reject what I'm saying and what other women are saying about getting on board with men. And I'm not talking about men who yell and scream at women on social media. I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about losers and dusties and men who cannot pay bills. They don't want families. They just want to have women in rotation. I am not talking about them. I'm talking about the, the men that we won't. Okay, those men have standards and you can reject it all you want and you can say, oh, you're mammy. Oh, you're being a pick me. You can say that all you want to. But the women that listen to me get picked, baby, as well as I have. And um, the women who tell you that you can do anything, are they married? And are they married to the kind of guy you want? So you have to qualify what I'm saying. And I'm not throwing shade. I'm saying you have to pick and choose what information you digest. Because if you're looking for a certain type of man, you're going to have to adjust. The rules that worked in the 80s and the 90s don't work in 2020. 20 and and beyond okay those of you listening to me in the future this doesn't work anymore i'm telling you it does not work <clears throat> let's keep it moving let's talk about relocation speaking of strategy uh phineas says basically women who reject soft life if they're rejecting soft life it could be they're rejecting it from you sometimes women want soft life from a certain type of man and they get picky like that but no worries because they are going to be hard pressed to find another man to just fund soft life it is difficult to find a man to fund your soft life outside of transactions because transactions are one deal where, you know, you make a deal to go on a trip and you all, you know, that's not what we do here. We're talking about keeping a man for life. We talk about man keeping skills here. We're not, talk we're not talking about transitions and transactions, right? Which most other people are talking about. Here, we're talking about maintaining a relationship, man keeping skills and starting a family, <laughs> a solidly middle class and upper middle class family an upper class family that's what we're talking about here uh, let me if, if i could just be blunt we're talking about a solidly middle class and higher here okay right so we're not talking about transactions right um and so if a woman is rejecting it from you it could just be she wants it from another guy or it could just be she doesn't understand what's going on it could, she could, it just be, she's, she bit off more than she can handle. There's a deep rooted issue there. And you should be glad that that's done because anybody that doesn't appreciate good people, uh, that's, that's a relationship you should leave anyway. Ladies, if a man doesn't appreciate your goodness, you don't stay and keep giving them goodness, right? <laughs> you check out. Same thing with the fellas. If she doesn't respect your goodness, there's 10 other women that would love for you to fund their soft life, okay? <laughs> Trust and believe that. So when it comes to wanting a, uh, to start a family and have, oh, you left her? Okay, all right, good. When it comes to s starting a life and the soft life, a lot of women that are talking about soft life are in the big cities. You're in Washington, DC, you're in New York City, you're in Miami, you're in Atlanta, Los Angeles. I hate to be the bearer of bad news once again, but it's really kind of hard to talk about the soft life and the slow life in major cities. You're gonna be hard pressed to be able to try to start a garden in DC to start a garden 
in New York. I mean, by definition, New York City is fast. By definition, major metropolitan areas are fast. And this is not a beat up. I just want people to understand what when you say certain things, men hear certain things because men understand that cities are metropolises. They are fast paced. They are quick moving. They are competitive. They are short paced. They are very fast. And cities don't normally shut down to what, 9, 10, 11? New York never shuts down. Vegas never shuts down. Uh, Atlanta might shut down maybe two, three, depending. Um, weekends, probably never. Uh, Houston doesn't really shut down. L.A. doesn't really shut down. Uh, the time I was in L.A., it was a traffic jam at three in the morning. I mean, so, <laughs> you know, it's really tough to convince a man that you want the soft life and you're not ready to move. Um... My husband believed that I was ready for the soft life, which I didn't communicate that to him, but I didn't really say that because that's not really my terminology. I'm just using that because you ladies use the term soft life. I just use femininity. I mean, that kind of encompasses everything. But for the sake of this conversation, um, when he said I'm in Ohio, I was like, oh, hmm. The first, <laughs> my first <laughs> response was, hmm interesting but then as I thought more about it I'm like well this is a perfect opportunity to kind of slow down and ladies if you haven't noticed I don't know if you know but marriage is slow marriage is not intended to be fast and marriages that stay in the fast lane tend to end have you ever seen celebrities married to each other? One person has to travel. The other person has to travel. Uh, you know, and I talked about that in my, when I broke down the different archetypes of men to potentially date and marry. And I talked about that. Um, when two, fa two people living in a fast life get married, it's very tough to maintain stability. And everybody's, you know, traveling. Everybody's busy. Think people have things to do. You're going to be hard pressed to try to, maintain the same level of energy throughout the relationship and the connection and it's very very tough and i'm telling ladies listen one you don't want to listen to me about uh preparing for marriage you're gonna have to fund your own soft life that means you're gonna have to pay for your own first class tickets you're going to have to fund your own rental of the pj you're gonna have to pay for your own spa retreats Shout out to the resurgence of all women retreats. They're going to make a fast comeback because there's going to be a lot of single women going because they're funding their own single life, their own soft life. And I'm not poking jabs. I'm just telling you what's coming. So you're going to see a resurgence of women online saying, hey, we're doing a retreat this summer. All of you just send us $4,500 and then that covers your hotel and your spa treatments. And we're going to do yoga at one o'clock and, and then we're going to have lunch and then we're going to sleep and then we're going to come back and then we're going to talk about femininity and then we're going to talk about relationships and then we're going to go to relax and you're going to see a surge of that. You're going to see a surgence of a resurgence of um, conventions, all women conventions where they sit and they go back and forth about relationships. You're going to see more in-person events with all women online and off. And in these conventions, they're going to be pushing soft life, soft life, soft life, soft life. And I'm telling you, ladies, the ladies that reject wisdom on how to understand men will have to pay their own way. And women who don't want to move, you want to stay in the big city. You will have to fund yourself like, well, Miss Nicole, how can I meet somebody in the country? Um, online travel for instance and hopefully if my client is listening uh she has some friends that are going to a state i'm not going to say the state she's going they're going to a couple of major cities in within the state and i said when you go to this state you go to this city because that's where the men are the other two cities is saturated you go to that city and she was like i don't know if they're going to be willing to do that and i said it's not look are they going to pay your bills? <laughs> Are they going to give you babies? Um, look, you're young, you're hot. 
because the women that, women that follow me are gorge, totally gorge. And I was like, you're adorable. Like you're so pretty. She's young. I said, girl, take that money. When you go to that state, when they go there, you go here. Cause that's where the men are. Um, on your screen, this is small town America. And I just love traveling around different parts of Ohio with Tony because I, the small town has really, like I've always liked it. I mean, I was born down South. I've kind of always liked down South, but like um, the small towns have really, really grown on me and they have a lot up here in Ohio. It just, you know, but just in, yes, Amish land, it's Amish country up here. You're liable to be going down a two lane highway and see some Amish, um, but you don't even have to go that far to see all of that. I'm just trying to get you ladies that to think outside the box because people criticize me for talking about or criticize people for talking about strategy. But hey, I tell women to go where the men are because you can be beautiful, gorgeous, feminine and all that and still be single as we will talk about later. This is small town small town America. And for those of you who are international, you know where the small villages are and hamlets are in your country, right? This kind of looks European here, but you kind of get where I'm saying. These are the places that I'm telling women to go. I'm telling you now before people figure it out. Colorado is where I told you ladies in a past broadcast, the city that has more millionaires per square or per capita, I'm sorry, per capita. I told you that city and you know, I told you that city ladies, go ahead and put it in the chat. If let me test you, which city did I tell you had more millionaires per capita? Don't guess it. Don't Google it in the chat. Just tell me if you know, you know, if you don't remember, that's fine. But in Colorado, this city has, and if you're on the app, I tell you this all the time. If you're on the app, I told you that months ago, like actually a year ago, when I first set up the app, I, I sent that message to you all. Hey, we in Colorado, make sure you go to this city. Nope, it's not Aspen, but good try though. But yeah, but they do a lot of visiting Aspen and Yale. So, um, um, Vail, I'm sorry, not Yale, Vail. They do a lot of traveling there, but I did give you a city. So anyway, Colorado is a good space for single people austin texas is another place you need to go before it gets saturated go before it gets saturated because most people are going to dallas and the last time tony and i were in dallas and let me tell you i was like looking around like i was a sightseer i'm like this is not the same dallas that i grew up with but never never the last, I still love D-Town, don't get me wrong. I love some Dallas. I always stay in the Frisco area uh, with my family, but I still love Dallas, no no doubt. Um, Houston, Houston, folks love Houston, but Austin is where it's at right now. And those of you who are in tech, and if you pay attention to anything, the folks uh, from Silicon Valley are moving to Colorado and Texas specifically um austin okay it wasn't denver but nice try that's a good one though but um the standard of living in denver is um sketchy and um yeah but that wasn't the city i was talking about but it is another place to kind of check out the singles but it's not my favorite city in colorado but Austin, Texas is that place. And if you are not afraid of long distance relationships and things like that, I would check out Austin. And I'm not speaking to any race, one race of women. I'm talking to all women. This is These are good places for all women listening to me under the sound of my voice. Uh, somebody said Houston is overcrowded. Uh, I didn't want to say that, but she's actually right. <laughs> I like Austin. Austin has always been a very eclectic city. I would say it's sort of like the Seattle of, I don't want to go that far and say that, but it's kind of, it kind of is the Seattle of Texas. If you've ever been to Seattle, um, you know what I'm talking about. It's sort of like if you've been into Atlanta, the five points of Atlanta, that that's what Austin is in a whole city. 
Um, so go to Austin before it saturates. And another city in Ohio that people are totally sleep on. I was telling Tony last time we were in Columbus, we had dinner up there. And let me tell you, uh, you know what? Before I start talking about Columbus, yes, Phineas, I told people a year ago, people were sleep on San Antonio. I've always thought San Antonio was a very good spot. But again, you have to be solidly middle class or higher to enjoy San Antonio. So don't even try to move to these places without skills, highly skilled, meaning RNs and <laughs> engineers, doctors, lawyers. Don't even try to try to wing it in these particular cities. No, it's not Sterling. But you're getting close. You're getting close. All right. But the other city that people are sleep on in Ohio, and I'm telling you, if you want to move up north to a place that's not saturated, that has industry, that has money, it will be Columbus, Ohio. And I'm talking about they have a job market. Um, they are building up Columbus left and right. The homes are absolutely gorgeous. And whatever you loved about Cincinnati or Cleveland, Columbus is the hot spot in Ohio right now. Toledo played out. Akron played out. Love y'all if y'all live there. Love you, but it's, it's, it's not where it's at. Dayton, where I'm close to, it's, it's played out. The hottest spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> is Columbus and when you go to Columbus you'll know what I'm talking about but if you're um in IT Columbus is the spot it's just if you're in education in um nurse medical field Columbus is the spot you all need to go before it gets saturated Virginia, Virginia is another spot outside of DC y'all because that DC metro Maryland, Virginia, um, it's a little saturated and I, every article I pull up is telling me the ratio of men to women is horrible for all races in DC. So I'm telling you, if you want a single man in DC, I would go for somebody that's a government contractor or a government worker or military. If I'm in DC, uh, it's just too many people playing games and I'm going to talk about that perpetrating um on on the green and they don't have it and so dc is one of those spots where they get to do that like miami and atlanta a lot of people love to perpetrate in atlanta and miami um <laughs> which we're going to talk about in a second but if you're in virginia i would stick with um richmond and there's another city i can't even think of right now i had it on the top of uh, it wasn't Manassas. It wasn't Roanoke. Definitely wasn't Roanoke. It wasn't Lynchburg. It wasn't Woodbridge. No, it's it was Richmond. It was another. It was another city, and I can't think of it. That's why I should have typed it. I should have written it down. But anyway, it's not Norfolk, but Virginia. You get my drift. Just kind of. Um, it's not Pueblo, Colorado. It's another. It's not Leesburg. It's another one. It's not Charlottesville. <laughs> Um, but uh, anyway, just look up the state and you'll know what I'm talking about. And here's another one that some people might have my head on a platter for saying, but personally, I think this place is on the come up. This place is on the come up. It's in the South and it's not saturated. I'm going to say Huntsville, Alabama on your screen, baby Huntsville, Alabama. Now don't go further than that. Because I don't want a saturation by the Gulf, but Huntsville, Alabama is that spot. I'm telling you, Huntsville is on the come up. I had a client who moved there. I think that was last year I talked to her and she said she liked it. And her uh, dating life was very robust because she was new. And I said, well, hey, there it is. Now let's get your strategy. And so Huntsville, Alabama is the spot that I would recommend as well. Uh, it's not Boulder. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the chat. Hold on. You see it? That's what I'm talking about. Google it right now, that city, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. More millionaires per capita. So Huntsville, Alabama, though, has industry, is what I'm talking about. And um they are Yes. Yes. Somebody said, Hmm, exactly. Um, but Huntsville has a lot of, uh, um, 
industry there alabama does it's just people just don't think husband when they think alabama and rightfully so but these places that i'm telling you trust me i'm your naomi trust me trust me on that okay now let's talk about miss risa tisa Miss Risa Tisa. Now, I am I I am not one of those people who jump on trends and jump on uh viral videos when people say things go viral. But this one is just like everybody kept talking about her. And my friend, shout out to the best mods on YouTube. Thank you so much uh for support. And he was like, Nicole, you have to know this story. I'm going live. I want your commentary. And so he started playing a couple of her, like two or three of her videos. And I was like, I'm really going to have to dive into this because people are, you know how it is. Stories stay hot for a week, maybe two. And people try to parlay it. And ladies, just so you know, when you go viral, make sure you're ready to go viral. Make sure you know what to do when you go viral. Like I told my husband, I haven't had my viral moment. And when it comes, I will know how to parlay it. Ladies, when you get, when you go viral, you better parlay that viral moment. <laughs> because it's not guaranteed you're going to have another one. And this is prime point here. One thing I did notice about her is she wasn't prepared to go viral. I don't think she wa was doing this to go viral. I think it just kind of built steam and people just, you know, gravitated towards the story because people are fascinated with that. Who, who did I marry theme, which that TV show is actually pretty good. <laughs> And people are fascinated with stories like that. Like, how could she be so dumb? And why didn't she see the signs? And, oh, I never would have chosen him. And why did she let him do? And so I'm not going to repeat those same sentiments over and over and over. I think we can all agree that she had some areas of opportunity. She actually is the poster girl for what I've been telling you ladies since I've been on social media on all my platforms. You have to heal first. Heal, 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 heal first. Otherwise, men like him, okay, this person on your screen, men like him will totally pre uh, prey on you and take advantage of you because your self-esteem isn't where it is your self-worth is low like your self-awareness all of these things are out of whack and so this creates a void for him to come in and pretend that he's feeling she also makes us church girls look bad because she said and i'm not beating her up i'm just kind of commenting on the things that stood out to me she mentioned that she knew it was wrong to shack up uh she knew you know her mother was a praying woman she was a church girl and she went against everything she knew and everything she was taught because you know it had, it had been a long time since she had had a connection with a man and that's what they think is going on with a lot of church women and so they attribute that to the church making a single and it's really not the church making a single it's our mentality while we're in the church it's our mentality of not working on ourselves while we're in the church has nothing to do with us not putting out has nothing to do it does have something to do with our looks it does have something to do with our presentation and our man keeping skills right it's okay for me to be your naomi but you have to be ruth and ruth had the temperament of a wife she had the preparation she was already a wife she was a widow right she had been widowed um and so she had the vein of a wife so i can be your naomi all day but you have to prepare to be a wife and a lot of women are sitting in the church not prepared to be wives and they think it's the church keeping them single and it's not nobody's telling you to fight five women to fight over the preacher who already has a wife. Nobody told you to do that. Nobody told you to go out and have a baby by, you know, the dude on the block and then come back into church and expect the church man to marry you. Nobody told you to do that. Nobody told you to sleep with the deacons. Nobody told you to sleep with other missionaries. Nobody told you to do any of that. So don't put that on the church. But when you do the right thing, somehow, some way, a man just shows up. I don't know how many women I've seen that have been in the church 
doing what they're supposed to do, not out here doing extra, but doing what they're supposed to do. And they show up, I'm engaged, I'm engaged. And we're like, who? Oh, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, he goes to this church and we're like, he's single? That's how God works when you do right. And you're like, wait, we didn't even know he was single. And it's just, you think, just, just looking that there are no single men in the church. There are no men trying to do right. There are no men and just out of nowhere, when you do right, God is faithful with his promises. I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you I was one of those people. Wait a minute, I can't be telling people how to get married and I don't have them a husband. Like, I can only do that so far. And people are going to go, where are the receipts, ma'am? <laughs> so, wait a minute, look. And so, I said, well, God, I mean, if that's what you want, I can teach from a perspective of being a divorcee and how to maintain. But... I want a husband. Like I want to keep her. I just got tired of praying. I was like, look, listen, um, if that's your will for me to stay single, then I will be happily single. And the moment I accepted where I was and I was happy and I started working on Nicole and not trying to please other people, but work on Nicole and everything my coach told me to work on and things that and that's why you hire a coach or a mentor to help you point out those things that you may not see and I worked on those things and boom um it happened but a lot of people think they don't have to we back to this point that I was making earlier that people think that they don't have to prepare for marriage and so that's what stood out to me with this young lady um is that look you have to prepare there are no shortcuts she thought oh my goodness my ideal man just flopped into my lap and I didn't even have to lose weight I didn't even have to work on myself I didn't have to work on my self-esteem Woo! I had a shortcut all I had to do was wait time out and boom it was just gonna happen Nothing in life is that, <laughs> it's not that easy. If it were that easy, everybody would be married. Now, wouldn't they? So she wanted a shortcut. It did not work. This is prime example of what I tell you ladies about shortcuts. Don't take a shortcut because you think you're taking a shortcut and shortening that distance from one space to the other and it doesn't work. So I'm not going to go in on her because I think everything negative that that could be said about this young lady has already been said. And I think we already know that she has areas of opportunity. What I haven't heard enough of, and I said this on TikTok, which is why I don't spend a lot of time on TikTok. I just go over there with my play brother who's doing lives and stuff like that. And I might go over there and hang out. But this is why I got frustrated real quick, because I'm saying all of the energy that was spent lying to this woman, misleading her, he could have went to somebody's school and actually earned all the credentials that he was lying to her about. He wasted two to three years lying to her instead of just handling his business and becoming that man. But nobody's holding his feet to the fire and saying, why is he allowed to roam? And my understanding is he currently has another woman that he's living with now. And so that goes back to the women. Why you all are harboring these, these dusties, but I digress. If y'all love dusties, then Hey, <laughs> if you like it, I ignore it. Listen, why is any, why isn't anyone talking about, cause I mean, this lady came online and she, she called herself fussing at me. You just trying to end make an excuse for her. He was paying the bills. And I said, wait a minute, because she said she still had to pay her car note. Now, um, in my situation, I don't pay bills. I don't, I have, I can't even tell you the last time. I think I saw the very first bill when I went to the mailbox for the very first time. I think that's the last time I saw a bill. Tony keeps the bill. I don't know what he does with them. They just, I turn on the TV and it comes on. I flip the light switch and it comes on. There's no <laughs> notifications that bills are not being paid. So I know they're being paid. This woman is saying, I bought a car, but I'm worried about how to make the payment. So in my record, it sounds like he's paying something, but he's not paying all the bills. Because see, paying bills means I don't have to worry about any bills. He's paying bills. So I'm giving him carte blanche to lie and scheme and love by me because he paid the light bill is that what we're doing is that how low the standards have become well ladies you speak for yourself but i'm not teaching you to be 
below middle class. Like, because this is struggle love one-on-one and no one is addressing the fact that he spent, I mean, his lies were like next level, like psychopathic level, pathological line and no one's addressing that like we just and and she went off and she was like well she tried to uh, you're making excuses for her she knew what she was doing okay but that just because she has low self-esteem doesn't give him the right to lie and drag her like that that's like pulling up next to a car that has the door open and the keys on the driver's side and you could just put the keys in the car and drive off with the car you could do that right but it's against the law so you see a woman who has self-esteem issues you see a woman that is a little desperate it's been a minute she's horny right she's a church girl so she's probably a little green and that doesn't give you the right to do what you did and it, the, i'm sorry but i i, I just women who are excusing this behavior you scare me you scare me a lot like i don't have to keep going in on her weight i don't have to keep going in her self-esteem she already knows all of that she acknowledged that please understand for those of you who have listened to me for a while you know that when when somebody admits the truth to me i'm done there's nothing else for me to say you admitted the truth <laughs> You know, I act like a dog with a bone when somebody is like kind of dancing around the truth. I kind of keep digging and digging and digging because I know the truth hasn't been revealed. Well, when somebody says, look, somebody came on my clubhouse stage one day. Y'all remember this maybe two or three years ago. She came on my stage and I was talking about marriage. And she said, look here, Nicole, you cool, but I'm a hoe. And I just want a man for money. So, <laughs> and I was like, well, there's nothing else I can say there. There's nothing else I can say. They were like, Nicole, you're going to say something to her? Are you going to cook her? Are you going to say, what, what else can I say? She was honest. She's honest. Isn't that what Jesus wanted? He wanted people to be honest with him. You don't come to me, Jesus, I'm perfect. Popping your collar to the Lord. He was like, just tell me who you are. Like he already knows, but just be honest with me. I'm not here to judge. I love you. I'm here to help you clean up. I died for you. You don't have to lie to me, but people still lie. So when people come to me with the truth, there's nothing else I need to say. The truth has been spoken. Now, whether I agree with it or not is a different conversation. I said, well, I don't agree with you, but it's nothing else I can say. And there was peace between me and her. There was no contention. There was no battle. When people lie to me, then we, we have problems. But when people tell me the truth, I, there's nothing else for me to say. I go back on mute. <laughs> right i've shared stages with people like oh is she on the stage with her we don't have to be mortal enemies because we disagree there are people on youtube that i disagree with probably 80 percent of their content but that 20 percent, i'm like hey i like this content i like it great video i don't have to be mortal enemies with people because we disagree that is a maturity level that everybody needs to get to just because she's different and she doesn't agree with you or you don't agree with her doesn't mean you can't find common ground that makes you likable but back to this the conversation here with tisa and, and i'm just kind of flabbergasted and floored at how many people literally <laughs> <laughs> just don't talk about this dude now there are shout out to those of you who have done videos and you've gone in on him because honestly tony and i were checking out some videos because he was curious about this guy and he said it sounds like he has a mental issue and i said yeah somebody to lie to that degree probably has a mental issue and i'm not excusing it one bit because somebody else is laying up with him as we speak like he's a man of value. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why a lot of men are allowed to continue being below, working poor, because they're not even working class, they're working poor. And they're allowed to continue doing that because there's some woman out there that's hard up and she's my man, my man, my man. That's a pick me. Someone who is with someone who's not even raising her level of status. He's doing nothing for you nothing absolutely nothing but he's there in existence that to me is what you should call 
so I, I, <laughs> I just, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. It blows my mind, but Hey, I think he has a mental issue. Um, and I think he only came forward because he thinks he's going to get some money out of it. So with this being said, ladies, it's nothing really more I can say about this. I think everything has been talked about, but shout out to those people that are going in on him. Like, why is he allowed to keep on lying? Why is he allowed to mess up people's lives? Why aren't the men holding his feet to the fire? Why? Uh, and I do believe that there are a lot of men who secretly want to do. And you know what Tony said? Can I say what Tony said? Let me tell you what my husband said. My husband said what this dude actually did was blow up the spot for a lot of other dusties. That's what he did. And so now, ladies, when a man shows you his bank account, you know he's showing you a screenshot. What you need to do is actually go up there physically to the bank and have the bank teller show you his money. See, that's what we're going to do. There, there will be no more lying. You do not take their word for it. Okay? Because that has been played out. And a lot of guys who kind of manipulate their way into your home and laying up with you and all this kind of stuff, be careful when they move fast like that. They're looking for a place. And for somebody that's su supposed to be successful as he is, he doesn't have a place to lay his head. He doesn't have any real estate. So you're walking around with $10,000 in the bank, but no real estate. You have offshore accounts, but no real estate. <laughs> um... Um, you have tried to buy houses and the deals fell through. Like, you know, to me, um, the, all of the energy he spent lying to this woman, he could have just, he could have just went and did it. And this is what I'm talking about. Ladies, you ladies have got to put your foot down. If you want these men to be more successful, it starts with your sons you're raising. Don't let him off the hook. Tell him to log off that video game and start studying. We need more doctors and lawyers and, and engineers. And we need people in artificial intelligence. We need people in STEM. Get off the game unless you're going to learn how to make the game. And get out here and make some money. It starts with that. And it starts with the men we choose. We can't be so hard up that we accept any type of behavior. And then we want to scream to anybody who'll listen when it goes south. We're going to stop listening to you all when you all log online and talk about how he did me like this. And he did me like that. I'm going to stop listening because we've told you we have people on YouTube going viral for saying we don't mess with Dusty's. She literally is going viral, making millions of dollars, telling you all to leave Dusty's alone and you still do it. I'm telling you not to mess with Dusty's. I don't even talk about them. So, and you still do it. So, hey, which brings me to the messages that prolong singleness. It's a lot of that going on. I recently went to a YouTube channel and the young lady was telling, and I love women in their 20s because they give a perspective on femininity that's fresh and new. And it's not new content. It's not anything that anybody else has said, but they give a different, a different perspective from their age group so i like it it's refreshing and it keeps me kind of updated with the younger women that i'm working with right um <clears throat> and she was telling women not to get emotionally attached and that's dangerous you can't fall in love and get married if you're not emotionally attached what feminine woman doesn't want to be emotionally attached. Femininity, uh, maintaining relationships and growing bonds and strengthening bonds is part of femininity. It's not a part of masculinity. So when we tell women not to emotionally attach to other people, uh, we're literally telling them to be more masculine. We're really, we're telling them to put a wall up. Now that works for transactions. That works for transactions, for women that are doing transactions. And I hate to say it like that, but I have to make the distinction. We don't talk about transactions. That works for women who just want to do a transaction and they don't want to get caught up with, they, with their trick. That they're, We don't do that here, right? We, we want to bond 
with the man that's going to be the father of our children. We want to bond with our husbands. We want to love him like we want him to love us. So my spidey senses, senses go up when I hear somebody tell other women, you're teaching femininity and you're teaching women not to get emotionally attached that's dangerous and that's what keeps women single because what happens is when a man genuinely likes you and you have this mentality i don't want to get emotionally attached that's when he starts to and not to say that it's all your fault but that does could be a reason why he doesn't call you back it could be a reason why he doesn't treat you nice and buy you things and spoil you and he doesn't take you to the best restaurants it could be why he slept with you and never called you back. It could be why he lied to you about a a, a, a relationship. It could be, it, it wasn't a lie. He actually liked you, but he kept running up against your wall that you have up because you've been told to have an emotional wall up. Ladies, a lot of women teaching femininity come from a place of brokenness and trauma. And they're teaching you passing on bad information about how to bond. Femininity is all about free flowing and welcoming. It's a welcoming energy. We reject bad energy, but we welcome good energy. And somebody comes to you in good faith and you have a wall up. Well, how can you, how can the bond be strengthened? How can, how can the connection grow into anything especially love if you have a wall up nothing about that is feminine nothing about that says i want love what that says is i just want to connect sexually and then i'm going to di disconnect after i get what i want after the exchange i'm going to disconnect that's keeping women single because there are men out there that want to buy there is no other reason to be with a woman past sex if he can't bond with her let me say that again so it sinks in there is no other reason for a man to choose this woman over that woman if he cannot bond with her so listening to someone tell you this this whole don't don't get emotionally attached i cringed i was like oh no you're teaching young, beautiful women not to get attached. I understand the premise behind it. The premise is pain behind it. And what it said is, I'm not going to teach you how to be a better woman. I'm not going to teach you how to understand men. I'm not going to teach you how to understand the masculine and the feminine and how they get along in relationships. I'm just going to teach you the shortcut, which is cut off your emotions. And that's just, we are emotional creatures. Women are emotional. We operate primarily first from emotion and then logic. This is why our response to, let's say, a car accident is first emotional. The first thing we're going to do before we feel pain, we're going to go, is everybody all right? Are you okay? Oh, I'm okay. Are my kids okay? Where's my husband? That's the first thing we do. Where's everybody else? That's why a lot of women are so tired and they're drawn to the soft life because they think about everybody else first. That's how we're made, right? And that's because we are the primary caregivers of little children and babies, helpless children and babies, and if God made us all selfish, don't, don't be emotionally attached, then that sets us up to be cold-hearted mothers, cold-hearted wives if we make it that far. Yeah. And when a man is in a car accident, you know what he does? He's logical. I got to get help. I got to see about everybody. I got to see about everybody. The woman, she's going to start crying and she's not really crying for herself. Most of the time she's like, where are my kids? Where are my babies? Where's my husband? Who's hurt? That's us. That's women. A man is, I got to go get help. How far are we from the nearest help? Is my cell phone working? Do I need to get everybody out of the car before it blows? That's how, man, that's how we naturally view things. And then we, we switch over. Then we switch over. In the absence of a man, a woman will jump in her logic out of survival right that's how we are as humans and when someone tells you to turn off your emotions and not get attached so how does that work don't tell me you can't make friends because the reason why you don't make friends is because you don't emotionally attach that doesn't just work for men that's why nobody invites you out for happy hour to hang out with your coworkers because you're emotionally detached that's why your sister and brothers can't stand you because you're emotionally attached
<laughs> respectfully like ladies when you're teaching femininity please research what you're talking about you cannot teach from a place of pain get off the mic log off stop teaching from pain stop it because femininity cannot be taught from pain you have to teach that from a victorious place i've had my therapy i've had my time in the sun i've done what i've i necessarily had to do for me to get to a place where i can pour into other women because this is serious you're talking about how women relate in life and you're teaching them to cut off their emotions i just i almost started crying because i'm like she's too young to be talking like somebody 55 60 years old who's been through a bunch of men who broke a heart you're on you're in your 20s what are you talking about come here girl let me hug you where your mom at <laughs> why are you teaching from girl <laughs> brandy says do you recommend for women in her 30s should you date one man or date multiple men I talk about this in my future wives course because I don't, I'm not going to put that out there. That's a one-on-one -on -one conversation because there's a way you have to do it. All right. But that brings me to my next point, And then we're going to get to the main topic detours because I was sitting here thinking this morning, I said, there was a situation where God was preparing me for where I'm getting ready to go. And because I don't think that I've reached my pinnacle. I don't think many of you have reached your pinnacle. And sometimes, if you're not careful, the enemy will put thoughts of your past in your head and to depress you, to make you feel like you haven't made progress. When you have made progress, a lot of you tend to get in front of the mirror or get when you're alone, um, you start having these thoughts of the past and you start beating up yourself about the past. That's why you have to have music. That's why you have to be in fast paced environments. That's why you have to constantly have stimulation, whether it's the TV, social media, music, a man, kids, you constantly have, constantly have to have similar uh, stimulation because if you're alone with your thoughts, you get depressed or some of you go as far as getting on medication. And I'm saying, I had that moment today where I was like thinking of split and it, it had been years since I thought about this. And this was right before I want to say maybe two years before I wrote my book, God had placed that on my heart to write a book about femininity. And I just, I was in a different place. I loved where I lived. I loved my car. I didn't particularly love my job, but I loved the paycheck <laughs> and I was, uh, I wasn't happy. And I just couldn't put my finger on why I wasn't happy. And I was like, I was close to God at that time, but I was single. So I was getting beat up. Why are you single? Are you single? Are you single? And I love my apartment. For those of you who live in Atlanta, I lived off of Glen Ridge Road right there off of 285. I love that area. Um, going into Sandy Springs, I was staying right there. I love the Charleston. I, they called them Charleston courts back there. I love that apartment. And I had a nice car and I was just really, I just was living it up. Best clothes. I was doing it. I hated my job, but it had good money. So you know how that is. So, but at that time, God was trying to bring me into my purpose. I, he was literally trying to answer my prayer and I wasn't listening. I had a wall up to God. I was praying to God, but then I didn't want to hear what he had to say. Some of, some of you are listening to me right now trying to figure out what your purpose is as a woman. Is my purpose just to get married and have kids? Is my purpose just to work this job till I die? What's my purpose? Write a book, start a business. What is my, what is my purpose? And you're trying to find that out. And I'm saying, don't sit and ponder about the past until it makes you sad. What happened? What happened? What happened, happened. And take the lessons from that and make yourself better. Take those lessons and learn. What did you learn from that? And what I learned is I can pray, but I have to actually have to have my ears open so that I can, so that I can hear the Lord talking back to me because I just wanted to hear what I wanted to hear. <laughs> and he was telling me, he was trying to mold me and make me because you can't say yes lord and then turn around and say well that ain't really what i wanted but okay that's not how that works <laughs> and i was at that place and so what i'm trying to tell you ladies is this don't sit up there and be discouraged about the past because 
I've seen that a lot on social media where these people sit up and beat women up about their past. Don't do it. There is a post I did on Facebook today and, and we were talking about, let me read it real quick. Hold on. And she, you know, God posted on social media. He said, let me go to it really quick. He said, bring back women who rub backs and pack lunches for hardworking men. And so a lady responded and said, they at work too, so they can help y'all split the bills. Basically what she's saying is, look, you want full-time housewife treatment, but your wife is at work. So some stuff you're going to have to give on. And a fellow responded in the chat. Like I, I, I responded with no mercy. Like you're in my dojo. There was no mercy today. And he said, well, I tried to do all that, meaning he tried to pay all the bills, but she cheated. And baby, I hit him back. You in my dojo. No mercy. I said, well, you need to choose better. And that actually has nothing to do with traditionalism whatsoever. <laughs> like, I literally said, I don't. so choose better. Isn't that what y'all tell the women? Choose better. So that's what I said. In my dojo, <laughs> that's what it is. No mercy. I swept the leg. That's Look, if you tell women we need to choose better, then you need to choose better. There is no, the rules are different for you. On oh, some things there are, I understand that. I understand that. But but listen, I, I don't care. I swept the leg. Look, if we have to choose better, so do you. You can't go pick the worst women just because they look good. And then when she does your face in, now you want to fuss at every woman? Yeah, we're not doing that. That went out like Harachi sandals and Jerry curls. We are not doing that anymore. That is over. Like Rubik's Cubes and, and, and Nintendos. We're not doing that anymore. If we have to choose better, so do you. And that brings me back to the Tisa lady. Look. You can't just fuss at her and not say anything to him. Are you out of your mind? This man is literally walking around. And, and hopefully, ladies, this doesn't trigger you all. But Tony said something. He said, this kind of guy can get violent to where he unalives her. She didn't even know that death was surrounding her. This guy, when he gets desperate, he's going to unalive somebody. That's the type of energy he's giving off. Either somebody else is going to unalive him or he's going to unalive them. And she didn't know how close she was to it being her. And that's what I'm saying, ladies. When you give men like this carte blanche to just run amok in your life, in your space, this is what they do. And they come back fighting. Because how dare you put me out? I'm, I don't have anything. This type of guy lives out of trash bags and he's going to go from house to house to house to house to house. He's monkey branching. The thing that they accuse women of doing, he's monkey branching. So while he's with her, he's work, working another broad because men, a lot of these men think like pimps. So he's working another broad while he's with her. That's where all the phone calls and the text messages, that's where the two phone. Now, mind you, he doesn't have a pot to pee in or the window to throw it out of, but he has two phones. The other phone is to work the new broad so that he can move in with her. See, he exposed a lot of this dusty behavior. And ladies, <laughs> hang with me and I'll expose some more of it. The two phones, man, if, if the second phone is a work phone, you should have a number to that too. Because if it's just a work phone, you actually should have more access to that than the other phone because it's just a work phone. So he's talking to the next broad, buttering her up so that when Tisa reaches her end, then he has another place to go. Ladies, it's time out for that. We should know better by now. So let's talk about how to know... <clears throat> If he wants to get serious with us or not. Men usually give signs better and are usually more uh, and usually more frequently than they say things directly. Men are going to give you signs. So 
if you're looking for a man to say directly to you, I'm looking at you as a possible potential wife. That will probably never be said. What he will do is give you signs. And that's what we're talking about today. So you need to pay a lot attention to men and you need to have patience. You need to pay attention to what men are saying and how they are behaving with you. A lot of times that helps you with your vetting process. Process Just paying attention to what men say and what they do. You don't even have to vet that hard. <laughs> a lot of times they will tell on themselves. They will be inconsistent. They will lie. They will cheat. They will, they will tell on themselves. But if you're rushing the process, and I'm not saying go snail slow with the man, but if you're going super, super fast to where you're moving in with each other in less than a month, you're exclusive in less than a month, something's up. Because men who want to get married never, and I'm talking about healthy men, competent men, the best men are not in a rush to get married. They want to get married, but they're not like, oh, she'll do. Let me hurry up and get married. Like, says no man ever. So when a man is like rushing, you look side, side eye at that. Don't try to make excuses for it. Look side eye. Ladies on the other platforms, hit the link at the top so that you can see the visuals because we're going to get into the main topic here. So when uh, men don't do that, you need to understand men and how they move and how they communicate you have to understand how men communicate don't assume don't operate from a place of he needs to do what i want him to do that doesn't work with men this lesson today is for women who have been seeing the same man for a while and you're in the dating phase you're in at least the dating phase so if you just met him this wouldn't apply but if you have been dating him for quite some time or you've been exclusive for quite some time, you're already sexually active with him, you're living together, got a kid together, whatever, this is for you. Notice how my numbers went down when I said that about men. I just want them to understand this is not the place for Dusty's to hang out. Please lose my channel. Don't come back. Don't want to see you. Have no use for you whatsoever. So, please. Um, cause a, a lot of men try to hide in these spaces with women and they have no intentions of marrying you or doing good by you either, but they want to hang in the spaces to see which one of y'all are going to fall for their crap. And you have me to point, point out these losers. Um, and so notice, <laughs> so, um, when you, Meet a man. You can't force this. You can't force him to behave the way you want him to behave. You just have to understand man. Um, this man will be ready to move on with you when he likes you, when he likes what he sees, what he hears from you, how you make him feel. He's going to want all of that. That's when he'll be ready to move on with you. And he wants these things to continue. He sees potential and you and him, it's important for you to pay attention to the signs. So what are the signs that a man is not wasting your time? He sees a future with you. Let's go. He's emotionally available. This one seems obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many men give off the impression that they are emotionally available, but they're not. He wants to get close to you, not just for sex. That's an emotionally available man. And I'm going to do um, a live on emotionally unavailable women. And just like the, um, the emotionally, you know, keep your wall up. Don't be emotionally attached conversation we had earlier. That's teaching women to be emotionally unavailable. And that's super, super dangerous. And that's keeping women single. I assure you, no man is getting ready to connect and try to keep a woman that is emotionally detached. Like that's, that's not happening. And so that's keeping women single. Ugh, it's just, it disgusted me. I'm so sorry, but ugh, no, but he wants to get close to you. A man that wants to get, cl get close to you, not just for sex. He wants to bond with you. Outside of the bedroom, for those of you having sex, <laughs> he actually cares about you outside of the bedroom. You know what a person cares about you, 
right? If you don't know when somebody cares about you, you shouldn't be dating. So, uh, you know, he, he feels like he cares about you and he's emotionally available. Meaning it doesn't feel like you're pulling teeth to get close to him. That's what I mean. He wants to share deep things about himself and he wants to know deep things about you. He's willing to be vulnerable with you and he's okay with you being vulnerable with him. He doesn't beat you up for sharing. He doesn't um, um, come at you wrong um, because you're opening up and he actually shares with you. He's safe for you emotionally. You don't feel like uh, your, your woman's intuition doesn't kick in and say, no, don't open up to him. Don't open up. That's not what happens. You actually feel like you're getting close to him, like he's revealing parts of him that he doesn't reveal to other people. He makes you priority. This is another one. He makes you priority. This is huge. You think it's a given, but a lot of women just let this go. He will move mountains to spend time with you. My husband drove hours to come to Atlanta to court me. Ladies, let me say this again. This is how I knew, uh-oh, I got something strong here. The man drove hours from Ohio to Atlanta to court me. And he didn't stay in my boudoir. He got him a hotel room. <laughs> he made the mistake of staying at that hotel. What was that hotel? Uh, it's, it's next to a McDonald's on Druid Hills. <laughs> I want to say Drury Inn. Was it Drury Inn? Uh, he made the mistake of staying there. And I was like, I wish you would have told me because I know hotels and that is no. <laughs> he stayed there. I was like, no, you don't stay at that hotel. Um, that was one of the hotels he stayed in. But he made me priority. He took off work to come to me and he said it was all about your safety why would i make you come to a place you've never been to you don't know me and it's not going to make you feel safe it's all about your safety and i was like wow okay i didn't even have to say that he said it on his own he schedules things ahead of time up to weeks and months ahead of time that's what i'm talking about he's not oh he wants to take you to the theater he wants to take you to the theater. You're going to know. Um, he's he's not going to, hey, um, always, ladies, always be leery of someone who asks you out all the time at the last minute. Unless he's like a resident at a hospital or something like that. Even then, they, you know, go out of their way to schedule time with you. They want to make sure they have time. So if he's always asking you out last minute, pay attention to that. There's something to that, and I wouldn't take him too seriously. There's something else going on. He has some other stuff on his plate, taking you on trips and things like that. He should schedule those things out a little bit. So if he's never scheduling things in the future, I would pay attention to that. Future plans involving you. A lot of women try to play this down, and they're so glad that he called, that they ignore the fact that he, you know, to take a trip takes months. It's a lot of times takes months and weeks ahead of time of planning, especially uh, when you're going places um, off season or so you need more time to prepare, especially if you have a job that you have to go to. If you have a work from anywhere job, fine, but most people don't. And so you need to schedule that stuff out. And if he's always last minute, okay, <laughs> chances are you're probably in his rotation. Your time is spoken for. He is making sure he's on your calendar. Right, ladies? The next one is he's willing to have discussions about the future and his personal details. If he is clamming up every time you want to ask him something, he is getting an attitude every time you ask him something, he is, um, you know, getting sensitive and defensive when you ask him basic questions about what he is um, 
doing, what he, what his plans are, what he wants to do, not necessarily with you all the time, but just in general, as a man, as a human, what are your plans? Where do you see yourself in five years? What do you plan to do in 10 years? You know, um, how do you invest your money? What do you do? Uh, you know, what kind of money markets do you invest in? And he just starts getting the attitude and, you know, what I noticed is that a lot of times on these social media platforms, every man has investor on his profile. Please understand if he's really investing, he does not have that on his profile. <laughs> Men who have money don't, in, 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 they do not advertise that. Ladies, they don't. Because that invites a different element of women, different element of people. It invites the IRS. Okay, it invites law enforcement it invites probing it invites jealous people so anybody with real money is not telling you that it just don't it immediately when a man starts talking about how much money he has i immediately check out i know he's broke at best he's working class at best because men who have serious that are not telling you that and they're not negating to that well you know i i don't brag on how much money i have but i have a whole lot of money i'm, I'm still i've tuned out i've, I've tuned out I already know. <laughs> um, he knows um, him opening up allows you both to grow closer. So he's going to want to open up to you. And he's just going, he's going to open up past surface level so that you two can connect on a deeper level. He isn't hiding anything about himself. He can't be um, inconsistent and then making promises. If he's making promises to you, ladies, but then he's inconsistent, you have your answer. Ladies, let me say that again. If he's making promises to you, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Just make a song out of it because you might as well. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Just put a beat to it because that's all it is. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And, but he's inconsistent with basic things. He's inconsistent coming home on time. He's inconsistent with calling you. He's inconsistent with dating you. He's inconsistent. You're in his rotation at best. He does not see a future with you. Men who see a future with you are consistent. They don't want to lose you because they feel they've reached something of value. You don't leave a ruby out on a table for somebody to just come up and snatch. It's a ruby. The Bible says who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. So when a man thinks he found a ruby, you, he is not going to let some other man with his grubby hands get his hands on you or even try. He doesn't want any competition. He wants you. And so when he is just inconsistent and he's making promises and breaking promises like Mr. You know, Mr. Jerome and Howes, Mr. AKA Legion, when he's making uh, and I put the link to the video in the description box of Tisa and all 50 or 51 uh, videos of that so that you can see it's a case study and how to be the dumbest people on the planet. That would be that video. If you're just bored and want something to watch, it's fine. Um, you would be, he would be a person like that. We're just making promises that he has no intentions of keeping just to keep you keep you plugged in and to keep you attached okay um that's not gonna work ladies and basically what he's doing is blowing smoke up your butt he has no intentions of doing right by you he's just blowing smoke he's making promises and inconsistent you're in his rotation at best there's definitely someone else he definitely doesn't see a future with you you don't believe me stick it out if you want to Stick it out and see if I'm wrong. I'm not. But you need to learn the hard way. So go ahead, stick it out and find out on your own. And you'll find out that you're in his rotation at best. Men who want you and are serious about you, they're not going to risk losing you. Stability and consistency. There's no rotation. There's no breaks in contact with him. He doesn't disappear for weeks at a time, months at a time, days at a time. He can account, you can account for where he is, where he was. If he tells you he was at work, he can account for that. Okay? Not wishy-washy with you. He's reliable. He lets you know that you can count on him. A lot of men are screaming and hollering about women are not submissive anymore. Women do what they want. Women, 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 women
And the reason is, is because a lot of men today, while they're screaming and hollering, they are not reliable. You cannot count on them. Then you can't, they're not dependable. They say one thing and do another. They do this with their own family, much less a woman. They are not dependable. And so because of that, <laughs> they're not reliable. When a man is serious about you, ladies, he's reliable. You can count on him. And he makes sure that you know that you can count on him. He's stable in his own life. So you can believe that he will be stable with you because he's stable in his own life. Ladies, if you meet a man, he's like, oh, I'm going to move in and I'm going to pay half your bills. It sounds good, right? On his face. But think about that. He wants to pay half your bills. Why isn't he paying his own bills at his own apartment, his own home? his own business. Why is he so ready to do that for you? And he can't do it for himself. Don't be so hungry and desperate and downtrodden that you just take whatever. Please understand a man that's thorough. He's stable in his own life before he even meets you. And he's ready. He's in a position to take on the responsibility of a wife and children. So a man like that is easily going to be able to, to handle a relationship he's going to be able to handle that right okay he's going to be able to do that he keeps his promises for the love of everything holy and straight ladies <laughs> when he makes a promise to you make sure he keeps it even if it takes a little bit longer to come to fruition, you make sure you hold them to that. You made a promise to me and we're on bad terms. If you just act like you don't have to keep that promise and ladies in, in return, you need to keep your promises, but ladies, this is how, you know, something's not right. Something's not adding up. If he's constantly making promises and he feels like he doesn't have to keep them. There's a promise there. I mean, there's a problem there. Stability in his affections. He's not hot one minute and cold the next. Hot one minute and cold the next. When a player is playing you ladies, he's going to keep you on a roller coaster. He needs you emotionally um, all over the place. When a man is not serious and he, um, he he's not sure where he wants to place you, he definitely wants you in rotation. He definitely does not want to move forward with you, but he does want you in place for his convenience. He's going to keep you on a roller coaster. So he may spend two weekends in a row with you and then you don't, you don't see him for two weeks. Um, that's what he's doing. He's putting you on a roller coaster. You ever had that friend every time she comes around? I don't know, girl. What does this mean? What does this text message mean? Uh, he hasn't called me in two days, but what do you think that means? You think he has? Girl, you're in rotation. <laughs> That's why my best friend and I are best friends. Because my ex-boyfriends, I would come and I would say, uh, uh, he did this and she, you're in rotation. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. She would say something else that I can't say on the air. <laughs> It's like you're in rotation to call anyway where are we eating dinner tonight where are we hanging out <laughs> i'm like but girl i want to talk about this nicole i love you you my girl but you're in rotation i mean she wouldn't say that necessarily she would say something else but at the end of it it meant you're in rotation and i'm telling you ladies if he's inconsistent he doesn't keep his promises he's in he's unstable unstable with his affections towards you meaning it's one minute he's up under you he can't get enough of you and the next minute he's gone for days at a time he's hot and cold he doesn't see a future with you he demonstrates that he wants a commitment. I mean, he makes it clear that he doesn't want to let you go. And I'm not talking about stalker where he's inconsistent, but then he comes around and he lays up under you for a few days. And then he's like stink all over boo boo and you can't get rid of him. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about he's consistent and he's saying he wants a commitment. Now you're working with something. He's generous. Right, he's not stingy. He's not up here penny pinching. Okay, the bill is twenty five dollars. You pay exactly this, and I pay exactly that, all the way down to the dime. Okay, really? Are we gonna nickel and dime everything in our relationship? Like when a man is truly into you, when a man is with his dream girl, you think he's nickel and diming his dream girl? Get with the guy that you're his dream girl. If I could just say that, 
And I know some of you are like, yeah, Nicole, uh, I don't want to be with him. But that's the guy that's absolutely going to give you everything you want with no push and pull. The guy that you are his dream girl. And if you think you're his, you're his dream girl and he's not giving you that treatment, you're not his dream girl. So don't try to force being somebody's dream girl. You're not. Okay? You're not. If you try to get out of your lane, make sure uh, this guy looks up to you in terms of beauty. Because if you don't, he's going to punish you. He's going to make you pay tax. Go back to my tax video. If I haven't made it private already, I may put that in my Patreon. Uh, because that, that, that tax video, you all need to understand taxes when a man is charging you tax. A lot of you have that old lady tax. You got the sick tax. You got the uh, single mother tax. You have the divorced mother tax. You have the divorced lady tax. You have the old lady tax. You have the fat tax. He has the ugly tax, the short tax, the broke tax. It's all kinds of taxes. And some of you all are paying four and five times what you should be paying simply because you want to be with a man you shouldn't be with. Everybody has tax. Everybody has tax. You know what taxes? Let me be transparent with you. You know what taxes I knew I was going to have to pay? I was going to have to pay the divorced mother with kids tax. And I was going to have to pay the old lady tax. <laughs> because men my age don't want women my age. So if they get with me, I'm paying a tax. They know menopause is around the corner. Hello? So that's, I knew I was going to have to pay a tax. So I said, well, look, and this is where strategy comes in. This is why I laugh at people who don't do strategy. Go, all right, love you. This is why people who don't have strategy miss the boat. Because when you don't understand taxes you're paying, you have people, uh, people out here dating, paying taxes they don't have to pay. You're in relationships with people you shouldn't be paying tax to. A lot of you single mothers need to know how to offset the tax. You divorcees with kids need to offset the tax. You're getting older. All of these women telling you, you can get a man. You can get a man at any age. You're absolutely correct. You're beautiful at any age. You're a woman. You're absolutely correct. But baby, you will have to pay tax. And if you don't know how to offset that tax, you will be paying. <laughs> Remember that Tyler Perry movie? When he was laying in the bed with that other woman and she walked in, put in the chat what he said to her. Put it in the chat because I can't say it on the mic, but you know what he said. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what tax is? That's tax. He was making her pay through the nose. Why? Because she was out of her lane. And he... Fat boy tax, ugly boy tax, socially awkward, nerdy boy tax. You was rich and now you poor tax. You a baby daddy tax. You rich but you ugly tax. <coughs> you short tax. You short and fat tax. Huh? You been to prison tax. Everybody has tax. There, nobody gets around tax. You need to go back and listen to my video on taxes if I haven't made it private. Because if you don't understand tax, uh, sometimes you all are in rotation of a guy making you pay an, inor an inordinate amount of tax. We talked about, uh, let's talk about Taylor Swift and Travis Kels. She's with somebody that's not going to make her pay tax. Huh? Because a lot of other guys will make her pay tax. Because how old is Taylor? She's getting on up there. She's a modern woman, epitome of a modern woman. A lot of guys will pay, make her pay tax because of that. Let's talk about Marilyn Monroe. Uh, her last husband, Arthur Miller prime example of someone making you pay tax now here he is with his four eyes socially awkward smart as all get out but he made the great beautiful Marilyn Monroe pay tax can anybody tell me in the chat what kind of tax he made Marilyn Monroe pay I just kind of gave you a clue but let's see if you've been listening to me what tax did Arthur Miller make Marilyn Monroe pay oh because he made her pay some taxes baby taxes that 
Joe DiMaggio did not make her pay. Taxes that Mr. Baker, her first husband, did not make her pay. But Arthur Miller, Mr. Incel Arthur Miller himself, made her pay. What was that? Can anybody tell me? I want to see how sharp you are. Yes! Woo! Beautiful, beautiful ashes is on it today, baby. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Eh... Uh, not so much because he was a divorcee, but that's a good guess. Brianna said the same tax Kim K is paying. There you go, ladies. You're sharp. Yes. You all have been listening. Shout out to Beauty for Ashes. She's on it today, y'all. Yes, ma'am. That's what he was paying. That's what she was paying. Yes, ma'am. And she was with him because she thought, well, surely Arthur with his incel self would not treat me like that. He won't make me pay a tax. Because see, if I get with Frank Sinatra, he would definitely make me pay a tax. Even though Frank Sinatra did not make Ava Gardner pay a tax because Ava was his dream girl. So you got to know the game there. See, Frank, not too much on Frank. But Frank, was make, he didn't make Ava Gardner pay a tax but he made Mar uh he would have made Marilyn pay a tax does that make sense because Ava was his dream girl what uh what's his face uh, uh, Arthur Miller he made Marilyn pay that tax and he made him you know, he made her pay that heavy to the point where she kind of lost it she she lost it he 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 did her in Joe DiMaggio Marilyn Monroe was his dream girl he did not make her pay a tax even though he should have because of how he grew up and his religious and all that, all that he had going on. And I talk about that in my first book. Um, he did not make Marilyn pay that tax. Oh, but Arthur Miller, he did her face in. So that's what I'm talking about, ladies, when I'm talking about taxes. Know your taxes because you will have to pay taxes. Um, uh, Mary J. Blige, she had to pay taxes. Beyonce with Jay-Z did not have to pay many taxes, but Jay-Z paid a tax. He paid a not so good looking tax with Beyonce. Now Beyonce didn't have many taxes with him. I don't think she had a tax with him. <clears throat> Why? Because she was his dream girl and she was younger. And she was one of the most desirable women in the world. So when you have all those things stacked on your side, you don't have much tax, but you can make people pay tax. To all the fellas in the room that want your dream girl, pay up, shut up and pay, shut up and pay. You have a tax. You want your dream girl to be in an average house on an average street. You have an average job, an average car. Oh, you're paying tax. Trust and believe that. And it will never stop. The taxes will accrue. Well, I'm going to have a baby with her, and that's even more tax. You had a baby with me, and I still don't have the house I want? More tax. <laughs> Get a woman in your lane. I just to I told you in my dojo, I sweep the leg. I swept his leg. He got on my post today talking about, well, these women are average, and they get on social media, and they want more than average. They're average. But, okay, so... Again, I swept this leg and I said, choose better. I mean, nobody told you to get with somebody that hasn't uh, uh, in the Lulu land. So, so you speak. Nobody told you to do that. Nobody told you to get with a woman that is not realistic about where she's placed in the market. Nobody told you that. I swept the whole leg. I don't want to hear that. Choose better. Scroll up. The answer to that answer to that question is um, in the uh, scroll up. Um, you know what, Didi? I will upload it on the app. I will upload the tax video on the app so you ladies can hear it. But it's not for public consumption. If it's not already, if I didn't private it, then that means... Um, it's for public. If I private it, if you don't see the video, then that means my train of thought was to move it either to the app or to Patreon 
or both. So um, I will move it to the app so you ladies could go back and listen to the tax video because you need to know taxes. That's how you get your strategy. That's how you win is understanding. See, and like Derek Jackson's wife, she didn't understand taxes. You with the guy that's out of your lane and he taxed her and taxed her and taxed her and taxed her way more than she should have been taxed. Why? She was attracted to him. So she was willing to pay the tax, but she didn't know that the taxes don't decrease, baby, just because you get married. <laughs> you had kids with them? Okay. Pay tax. It doesn't stop because you get married to them. And 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 I may upload it to my um, Patreon, Finny, and so you all can hear it. On the app, uh, uh, I will download it on the app as well. So you don't have to do Patreon and the app. Um, so the ladies that are on the app, I will download it and send you a message that is available. So turn on your um, notifications so you can see that. And I will upload it to my Patreon. Give me a few hours to do that. When I can get somewhere and get settled. Um, rewind. I talked about Taylor. She's with someone she doesn't have to pay that much tax with. And so you have to understand how you are assessed tax. And a lot of people are out of their lanes and they don't understand tax. And they're getting taxed. You got the old lady tax. The old man tax. Old men think, oh, I'm going to get with this young chick, and because I have money, I don't have to pay tax. Yes, you do. She's charging you for all those times she has to take you to the doctor, give you your medicine. You can't go out jogging with her because you are arthritis and all that. The money is good, but you still have tax. You know, you, don't, you can't get down in the bedroom like those young studs can so she's charging you a tax. You think you're circumventing that because she's to shall if you don't get out of the Lulu land. We all have tax to pay. <laughs> okay, you older ladies trying to circumvent tax with the older guys and trying to get with the younger guys. News flash, breaking news. Ladies, those younger guys they charge tax. Well, no, they love me for my, they do love you. They absolutely are attracted to you and they still charge you tax. Don't think it's just the older men getting charged tax. No, the older women gets charged, get charged tax by the younger guys. Why? Yeah. Do I need to break it down to you? Do I need to break it down to you? Why you're paying tax as an older woman with a younger man? Do I really need to do that? I don't want to do that. That's mean. I'm not going to do that. You know, you know what kind of taxes you're, you know, come on now. All right. The next one is when you're with this guy, you know, it's serious because things just flow and it's not like pulling teeth with him. You ever been with a man and it just flows? You all can just communicate. It seems easy. He's open. You're talking. He's saying he loves you. And it actually feels like he means it. Yeah. There's a future there. He's moving towards exclusive exclusivity and commitment. There's no confusion about what he wants. That is someone who is taking you seriously. He doesn't want you seeing or sleeping with other people. This is a big one. If he's like, well, do your thing, girl. Do my thing. He's letting you know <laughs> he's made his offer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he do, do my thing. That's not what I wanted to hear. Anytime a man, you tell a man, I'm going out with my girls and you know, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And he says, Oh yeah, go have a good time. No, if a guy is into you and you say something, if he's into you, are there going to be other guys there? That's when you know, you got them. You're like, yes. If he says, um, who are you going with? Uh, where are you sleeping? Are you going to have women in your room? Who's sleeping with you? Is this an all girls trip? How long are you going to be gone? Who are you going to be with? Where do you say? If he starts probing and asking questions with everything else that I've told you up to now, you're in good. And he just said, oh, God, well, go ahead and have a, he doesn't ask you how long you're going to be gone. He doesn't ask you who you're going with, where you're staying, 
who's touching you, who was in the picture with you, all that. And he doesn't say anything, baby, you're still single and it's not going to change anytime soon. Not with him. Now, that's all the list I have for you today, but let me be clear with you. If you are not seeing these clear signs and some time has passed, it may be time to make some moves. It may be, t it may be time to make some decisions because um, you should be moving forward. And note, all of these things that I suggested today, he must have all of these qualities in order for it to be moving forward. It can't just be he's making promises for things in the future, but he's inconsistent. Or, you know, um, he's emotionally available, but it feels like pulling teeth with him. Or he's open and, you know, he wants to spend time with me, but he's inconsistent, but he's emotionally unavailable. Like he's there, but he's emotionally unavailable. He's willing to have discussions uh, with you about the future, but he doesn't want to solidify anything. It's still like pulling teeth to talk about it or he's emotional. Uh, any of those things. Everything I said today has to be in place for it to be moving forward. Well, Miss Nicole, I mean, it, everything is on there. It's just like it feels like it's pulling teeth. Then there you have your answer. A man that wants you is not making it difficult for you two to get close. He wants that. He craves that. There's so many men that want to be that want closeness and they want to be married. But marriage is not even in the conversation because they can't even get close to a woman. And then you have young women online telling other women not to be emotionally attached. Don't you? That plays right into the hands of men who just want to have sex and, and walk away. Well, she's not attached, so she doesn't want to be together. So that's that's fine. <laughs> you just play right into his hand. A lot of men will never tell you they crave a woman taking his face and saying, baby, I believe in you. Look in him in the eye and say, baby, there's nobody like you. You are the best. Go get him, tiger. I'll be right here waiting on you. Okay, you made a mistake. Get up and dust, your, dust yourself off and get back out there. I believe in you. One of my favorite movies is The Founder with Michael Keaton. He's one of, one of my favorite actors from back in the day. And Michael Keaton played Ray Kroc. McDonald's is one of my favorite businesses to study. And if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. I had no idea all of the business behind McDonald's. I have a new respect. Whether you like their burgers or not, you have to have a new respect for them. And one of the things that I teach women is to pay attention to that wife he had. The first one. She missed the opportunity. You have to know your man and know what kind of man you have. And she missed the boat big time. She missed a big opportunity to really bond with her man and maintain the bond with him. Um, for those of you who want to understand those kind of men, entrepreneurs, you can't just be in one place. Well, I got him. We're married. It's cool. He's constantly moving forward. The same thing I've, I've talked to you about Conrad Hilton where he was constantly failing at businesses. I don't think he was successful until, I think he sold insurance, he had restaurants, he did all kinds of stuff before he went into the hotel business, hospitality uh, industry. And the point I'm trying to make is, to be with those kind of guys, you have to be supportive. You have to know how to be supportive. Um, his first wife, Ray Kroc's first wife, would swear up and down she was supportive and in her way in her understanding and in her bandwidth she was but when you're with him you have to expand you have to expand with him and men will not volunteer that information that they want a woman that understands them it's not just about looks do you understand him one of the things that attracts me and my husband together is that I get him and he gets me. Do we get on each other's nerves sometimes? That's every couple. But do I get him? I get him. And I'm still attracted to him. And he gets me and he's still attracted to me. And we rock out. But we get each other. 
And that's what every man cannot articulate. He expects the woman that he falls in love with to get that. I want you to get me. I should not have to vocalize every single thing I need. You should just be intuitive enough to get me. That's the one that gets the ring. If it's taken you more than a year to secure a ring, I I mean, okay. Um, <laughs> he can even open up to you about his personal business and his dreams. He could do all of that. He can do all of that, but if he does not have everything that I listed on this list today, if all those things are not in alignment in your relationship today, he could have told you his dreams for the future, his dreams, not the dreams for both of you, his dreams. That's the difference. Pay attention to that. When a man is telling you his dreams, do they include you or is he just speaking in general? See, I pay attention to stuff. Are you talking about me or are you talking about... <laughs> My husband says, I'm moving away. I plan to move and get this house. I mean, are you doing that by yourself? Or are you doing that with me? Or are you doing that with your wife? Like, what? Are, oh, yeah, it, me and you. Oh, okay. I just need some clarity. Uh, you know, you all just kind of fill in the blank. And I used to do that too when I was out here uh, right after my divorce and my low self-esteem, you know, it, it took a, it took a hit after my divorce. I felt some type of way. Now I'm in this major city with all these beautiful people. And I'm like, what is going on with me? Where do I fit in? And I would not ask questions. I would just assume a lot of stuff and it got me in trouble. So when a man was talking to me, I would assume what he meant instead of asking for clarity. Now, anybody that talks to me, whether it's a woman on my life, whether it's a client, whether it's my husband, anybody, I ask questions. Okay, so what do you mean by that? If you post something on my Facebook or uh, um, um, IG or anywhere, and I'm, I'm like, okay, so what do you mean by this? What do you mean by, ladies, I'm trying to demonstrate to you how you get the answers to your questions. A lot of that vetting, you don't need a whole book about vetting. Just ask questions and accept the answers. Notice I don't talk a whole lot about vetting. You know why? Because it's simple. Ask questions. Well, Miss Nicole, I don't ask questions. Well, how do I ask? So with marriage, is that something you see in the near future or down the road? Well, I haven't really thought about it. That tells you everything you need to know. Don't try to take that and make that what you want it to be. He's telling you I'm not thinking about marriage right now. When's the last time you, 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 when's the last time you've been in a serious relationship? About five years ago. How long did it last? Six months. Why did you break up? Eh. Yeah. He's telling you everything you need to know. Don't try to make it more than what it is. You, you all make vetting more difficult than it needs to be. When men tell you something, especially when he tells you something directly, don't try to, I used to do that too. So I'm guilty of it. That's why I know that a lot of women do it. Uh, when a man tells you something, because you want something, you want to hear something, you try to morph what he said into what you want to hear. And that's kind of what Risa Tisa did. And that's what got her in trouble. No, he's he's been lying to you since day one, but you needed to hear a man say that. Not just him, you needed a man to say that. And that's what got her in trouble. So ladies, all five of these things I said today, respectfully, if one of them is missing, it, you have some more time before you get the ring. If two things are missing, you have a little bit more time. If three things are missing, you're not. he's not the one. If four things are missing, He's, you're not the one, you're in rotation. And if five things are missing, he's not thinking about you long-term at all. You are in rotation at best. That he'll come to you, come see you when he feels like it. If one thing is missing, he likes you, he's still, jury's still out, he doesn't know. Uh, if it's been more than a year, oh, he knows. It's just that he feels like you've accepted it this long, so why would he change anything now? If, if, Two things are missing. Um, he's not really trying to make a move one way or the other, but you can still stick it out if you want, uh, especially if it's been over a year. You can stick it out longer. He's not really trying to make a move one way or the other unless he finds a better deal. Uh, if he finds a better deal, he's out, deuces, and you won't know what hit you. Um, if it's three things missing, you're in his rotation. 
strong. There are other women and he's looking for a better deal than you. You just happen to be the best deal at the moment, but he, someone else has the top spot. It is not you. If four things are missing, you're in his rotation. You're not in the top spot. He's definitely looking for something else. Um, and you know, you can stick around if you want, but it won't change. It's that's just what it is. All five things gone. He, you're not in his rotation. He's just seeing you whenever. Stop. Close your legs immediately because that's not going to change. You're not going to get a ring from this guy at all, ever. I will go to space before you get the ring from this guy. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm just trying to cut. Ch Look, my channel, my, my, my spaces are for cutting down the length of time you're single. Okay? Not to prolong it and keep you guessing and, hey, my program is only open three times a year. You better get, I don't do that. It's open. You ready for it? Come on. Get this information because you know what? I don't want to be the one responsible for not telling you something or giving you something and you meet somebody and you don't have the information you're supposed to have. Because I know you can meet a man just like that and just like that you can miss it, mess it up, sabotage it. Just because you weren't prepared. Marriage takes preparation. I, I cannot stress this enough for you ladies. It takes preparation. You think, well, I could just stumble my way into the relationship. Do you know how many things you go through uh, that you could possibly waste time on? You can have a coach. You can have a mentor. You can do group coaching. You can watch a million YouTube videos. You can follow five, 50 million people on IG. You can pay for their little eBooks and their little, get this for $7 and I can tell you how to do X, Y, and Z. You can do that uh, as many times as you want. You can take a class. You can take a seminar, a webinar, a retreat. You can read a bunch of books. You can go to therapy. Okay? <laughs> and you know what? After spending thousands of dollars and wasting time, you still can be single. So why waste all the time? Why just go ahead and prepare for what you know you want? Don't waste time. Get it. And if you... You're listening to this going, Miss Nicole, but I'm in love with him. How do I get those five things? Time. That's, uh, I mean, emotionally unavailable. He's closed off to you. You really want to keep having sex with dating somebody who's closed off to you. The next one was he makes, pro makes you priority. You really want to make a man priority who's not making priority, making you priority. He's discussing the future, but you're not included. That's, you really want to continue with someone who's doing this to you. He's unstable. He's inconsistent. He's making promises and not keeping them. He's not even consistent and stable in his own personal life. You want to keep him around? Please say that out loud. I want to keep an unstable man, an unstable man around. Say it out loud. Say it right now. Say it right now. I want to keep an unstable man around. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? I want you to take, I want you to record yourself saying that so you can hear it. How ridiculous is that? I want to keep an unstable man around. He's inconsistent. He makes promises he doesn't keep, but I still want to keep him around. And I want you to replay that. Listen to it. Listen to yourself say that. And you see how your body recoiled when you heard that? That's how you should react to a man who's not keeping his promises to you. He's in, he's unstable in his own life. He's inconsistent in his own life. It feels like pulling teeth with this guy. It feels like pulling teeth to get a date. It feels like pulling teeth to uh, uh, spend time with him. It feels like pulling teeth to, to get some quality time with him. It feels like pulling. So you want to keep a man who's on the fence about you? Well, I don't know how long it's going to take. I just know 
Maybe you just have a lot of time to waste. I don't have a lot of time to waste. The ladies I work with want to get married yesterday. They don't have a lot of time to waste. A lot of older women that give advice, they have time to waste. They got all the time in the world. They've raised kids. They have disposable money. They're, you know, they have all the time in the world. But you ladies that want to start families, you don't have all the time in the world to just play around forever. Because I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I want to be prepared. I want to have my man in place. I want to prepare myself even if i'm not ready for marriage tomorrow i still want to be prepared for it i want to have man keeping skills so when that opportunity arises i don't lose those types of men when those men come around and you fumble the ball that hurts it's one thing to meet successful men and you're not ready. So you can rationalize, well, I met those successful men and I'm not ready. So that's what happened. And you have the skill to keep attracting them and keeping them. But most women attracted them when they were young. They did not have the skills to keep them then and they don't have the skills to keep them now. And just so you know, this is not a race thing. But the more successful you get, the harder it gets to practice this, I want to marry well stuff. That stuff is for women that are young, that just got out of college. That's for them. For those of you who made career your, your thing, and I'm not knocking you. I'm just telling you what you're facing, what you're up against. Because when you understand what you're up against, you can win. You can play to win. But if you want to keep your head in the sand like an ostrich and pretend like everybody else around you isn't competing, go right ahead. I just did a, uh, uh, I gave advice on the app about women you need to watch out for. And it, it was inspired by our good sister, uh, Portia Williams, uh, and her recent announcement of her divorce to the oil man. And I said, you all need to understand friendship. And I told you what to look out for that, uh, certain men, there is no rule. There's no hard and fast rule. So you're not competing, but they are. Just understand that. I talked about this last week just a little bit, but I went in the weeds with it on my app. Because, see, I could talk that talk on the app. And I told you, some women, you have to watch out for. And you have to know what's up. <laughs> and listen, you're not competing, but they are. And when you fumble the ball, they pick that ball right on up. Oh, he was my ex. So they forget you all were friends. That's what time we're living in. You're not competing, but other women are. <laughs> and age has nothing to do with it. Money has nothing to do with it. Looks has something to do with it. But when it comes to women and all of that, look. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, I want to do more lives so that we can have more discussion. So it doesn't have to be so long. Um, we've gone two hours so far. I just want to be here for any questions. If you have questions, you want to ask me about what we talked about. Now's your time. I'll give you a few minutes to go ahead and, um, write your questions. If you have questions. Is he playing with you? Is he wasting your time? Does he see a future with you? When you have all five of these things in place, a ring is coming. It's just a matter of time. It's coming. If you don't do anything majorly to drop the ball, uh, if you have these things, and I'm talking about you all have been dating for quite some time. Um, you're headed to, especially if you're exclusive and all these things are in place, a ring is coming. But if these things are not in place and I'm not talking about, you just met this guy, of course, things are not in place. I'm talking about women that have been dating this guy for quite some time. Um, you're in a so-called, I don't know, a rapport with each other. Uh, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Not somebody you just met. That's not going to apply. Okay. Any questions, ladies, before we get out? 
the tax video i was not expecting to to talk about taxes but it's important you ladies understand taxes and a lot of you are paying taxes you don't need to pay simply because you don't understand how that works so uh pretty brown eyes she says a guy wanted me to wash his dishes knowing that he works a lot and have limited time at home is that being a pick me he also says he can cook clean sew things and ask me what do i bring to the table well here's the thing what does he want from you what's his offer what is he offering because how long have you known him and what is he offering because I don't have a problem tidying up a man's space, especially when I've been there a few hours um, and we are exclusively dating. There's we are moving forward. He is emotionally open. All of the things I described here. Um, we are moving forward. There is a future. We spend a lot of time together. He isn't a rando. I, I don't see a problem with tidying up a space that I've been in. Right. But some random guy that we don't have a rapport, I don't know what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of questions. I'm not your mate. And so what it sounds like is he's been listening to folks online. Running, what, is she, what does she bring to the table? Well, was your mom a wife? Okay, so what does she bring to the table? <laughs> So you need to know how to pop back at these men. A lot of them, their mothers weren't even wives, but they, they know so much about what a wife does. The, the answer is they don't know what a wife does. They are hoping to trip you up and get you uh, in, in, in their rotation, proving themselves to you. So the question becomes, uh, was your mom married? Which you should already know the answer to that. Before you even get to this, get this far with a man. Um, if he tells you his mother was never married, um, I wouldn't even engage in anything like this. Because men who were raised by women who were wives, they know what a wife is, what she brings to the table, what she offers a man because she saw her, saw his mother doing it. So what he's doing is acting silly because he's been listening to losers online. Tell, what do you bring to the table? What did your mom bring to the table? Like, like seriously, like I never had to answer that stupid question to my husband. You know why? Because his mother had been married 50 years. So he knew what a wife was supposed to bring to the table. And what he did was he observed me. So he didn't have to ask me a stupid question. Ask a nine question like that. Pretty brown eyes. She came back and she says, we've been around for two years. He asked me that the first day and I changed the convo and he continues to ask that until this day. Okay. So what, um, are you cooking and cleaning and sewing for him? Like, what are your wife skills? Can you tell me what your wife skills are? You've been all. Uh, you said you've been around for two years. I don't know what that means. Are you all exclusive? You all just having sex? Like what exactly? Like I need the deets. <laughs> like, is this somebody you, you're serious with? Because it doesn't seem serious to me. Because if it's serious, he would know that already because you would be demonstrating wife skills like he's demonstrating husband skills his ability to provide that's why he pays for dates he is escorting you to your car walking you to your door to your home he is demonstrating that he is a protector so how are you demonstrating to him that you will be a good wife i'll give you an opportunity to respond uh, and so pretty brown eyes you probably need to go back and listen to this whole live uh probably at the part where i start talking about uh things that should be in place for you to know if he's wasting your time all five things need to be in place because if you've been dating him for two years um and all five things are not in place you're in his rotation flat out 
Just no, there are other women. He's evaluating them. And if they offer him a better deal, you're out of the, you might remain in the rotation depending on, you know, if, if she's a better deal. So, you know, and if she comes with the wife skills, she might get the ring. And that's why a lot of women, not saying that this is the case, I'm just speculating. I'm talking to the women that are listening that this might be a situation. Um, a lot of women could be dating a man and then he just up and marries somebody else. Uh, that happens. Um, it happens. And the reason why is because they didn't know that they were in his rotation. And so it's a good idea. Let a man look, get rid of your rotation. If we're going to be exclusive, then I need you to get rid of that rotation because trust and believe he has one, especially if he's a producer. If he's a producer, oh, he has a rotation. Uh, I don't care if you think he's not cute. He has a rotation. I don't care if you think he's not the richest man in the I don't care. He has a rotation. He has options. Women know <laughs> producers when they see one. You're not the only one that recognizes producers. She came back and she said, thanks for ans answering. I try to demonstrate, but he's always working. I try to use words of affirmation and encouragement, but when we're around, it's spur of the moment dates. It's mostly sex now. Well, you have your answer. Baby girl, what do you want from him? Because this doesn't sound like he's offering much. I want you to go um, look at my last video, maybe two videos back when I said, what is he offering? I didn't get a lot of views on that, but this is going to come up for a lot of you all. A lot of you all are dating guys. They've already made you an offer, <laughs> especially if you've been dating more than 90. Uh, no, let me be, let's keep it 100. If you've been dating him more than 30 days, he's already made you an offer. And if you think that offer is going to change, it's not. So the ball is in your court. Uh, Brianna, hi, Brianna advice on entering into the marriage market after ending a relationship that I walked away from. How long has it been? How long has it been? Give yourself time to heal. Maybe go to therapy, you know, work on you for a little bit. Give yourself a chance to breathe, evaluate the relationship a little bit. Um, gather the lessons that you can learn from that relationship and then get back on out there. Um, how long was that relationship? Why did it end? You need to have those answers. You know? How long should an engagement be? Um, I don't I don't think it should be longer than a year. It shouldn't be longer than a year. And sometimes it's extenuating circumstances, like you all have to move cross country. Um, you know, you're saving up for a wedding or he's deployed or something like that. Illnesses, changes in the family dynamic. It's a lot of things that could postpone it. But generally speaking, rule of thumb, it shouldn't be longer than a year. And that means you're still courting, you're still exclusive and things like that. Um, other than that, and if you're not planning for a wedding, go ahead and go to the courthouse. Have you all a little, uh, have you all a little reception and exchange vows at the lake or something and call it a day. Do not, ex do not, uh, stretch these engagements out ladies, because anything can happen. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Listen. <laughs> anything can happen. And if, if he's ready to go and you're ready to go and you're not trying to plan a long, big old wedding or move across country or something like that, child, ugh, go to the justice of the peace and call it a day or go to the lake or the, the mountains or something. That kind of stuff is romantic anyway. Go to the mountains and take a picture and. Look at us. We just changed files. People be like, oh, that's so sweet. It'll probably go viral. <laughs> what what'd you spend? 50 bucks? What the cost to pay the uh, officiant? 
gas money. Look, I'm just saying, ladies, don't prolong engagements. Just keep it simple. Unless you're planning a wedding, don't stretch that out. Just don't. I've seen people engaged for years. I'm like, why? I, I don't understand it. Uh, she came back and she says, when he sees me doing my own and I'm giving others attention, then that's when he dates, uh, when the dates come from him and he's an owned operator in trucking. Oh, okay. All right. So this is an orbiter. Okay. And if you'll allow me to mentor you real quick, this is an orbiter right here. This is a guy that has you in rotation for his convenience. Um, he's not ready to move forward with you. He's moving in place with you. He likes how things are. He doesn't think you're going to move on. He hasn't found anything better, but he, you know, you're, you're convenient. It's, it's, um, he doesn't have anything against you. It just, he, he doesn't feel like moving forward with you. Seriously. He doesn't see the logic in it. Remember I talked about logic and emotion when it comes to men Go back and watch that video. I think last week I, I privated that. So I'll make that good on the app for a few days. So you all can go back in that. When it comes to emotion and logic, it's got to make sense. And right now it doesn't make sense for him for whatever reason, based on what you're telling me. And so he's keeping you at arm's length and rotation. And that will continue as long as you let it. Um, uh, until he finds a better deal. And this could go on for years. As long as you let it or and he does not find a better deal. <laughs> okay. Um, and when he sees you dating other guys, he comes around. And that's because he likes you where you are. He likes you being convenient for him. He doesn't want anybody else messing with the girl that he's messing with right now because he hasn't, he's not finished with you yet. He hasn't found a better deal than you. And so when he sees you potentially dating other suitors, he's like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm not done messing with her yet. And so you ladies think, oh, he's still into me. He won't let me go. Every time I try to move on, he, girl, he has you in rotation, baby girl. So go get you another man that is going to make you number one because this one, he, he's not doing it. And if he's, it sounds like he's relatively successful. He's going to use that over his head, over your head. And he's a trucker, which means he probably has women in several cities. And he's going to use this against you, especially if he ha if he has a little money in his pocket. Um, you know, guys that don't have a lot going on in society, they get a few dollars and all of a sudden they are, you know, John Powell Getty and they're, you know, uh, Rockefeller and so forth and so on. And so they want to talk down to you. What, what do you bring to the table for me? They want you to grovel they want you to uh they want to subjugate you they want they want you to get down and oh oh please please ask me for ask me out please they want you to do a tisa just just let him run them up you know just be convenient sometimes it's not necessarily run them up they just want you to be convenient and so when they see you uh uh dating someone else they're like oh wait wait wait, wait. i wasn't done messing her over yet I'm still getting my feel of her. Now, mind you, he still could be dating and courting someone else that seems like a better deal. And if she pans out, he'll just stop talking to you, cold turkey. He'll just go black. He'll just go fade to black on you. And you're like, well, wait, wait a minute. I usually get a Valentine's rose bouquet, something from him. I usually get a phone call. He'll just go complete black. Then when you call him and you go ham, you're like, wait, why did you stop calling me? Why did you stop? Oh, I didn't tell you I'm engaged. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. That happens. <laughs> and he doesn't think he owes you anything because he kind of, when guys have you in a rotation, they kind of expect you to know that you're in rotation. Okay. Um, we moved and COVID happened, but now we're expecting a baby. He wants more than courthouse. Um, why? Why does he want more than courthouse? He has the baby already. Um, Tell him you can have the courthouse solidify the deal and then you can go back and have a wedding once you pop the baby out and that put, 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 uh, hold his feet to the fire and, uh, that'll tell you everything you need to know.
If he wanted a wedding, he would have had that before now. Tony and I got married in 21. That was the end, the tail end of COVID. But we were planning the wedding during COVID. So if a man want to marry you, baby girl, he will marry you. We were planning a wedding during COVID. Going to see venues, ordering food, went to go get my dress. We had on mask in my photos that I'm trying on my uh, my dresses. Um, and my friends in the back, we all had mask on. <laughs> when a man wants to marry you, he's going to marry you. He's going to make sure. So if he's serious, he'll go down to the courthouse, get say I do. And then you later can have the big, you, you all later can have the big ceremony. Uh, it has been a few months. I'm in therapy and active. The relationship was five years. I take accountability for my role in the lift of it. I understand you're in therapy. You're learning from it. Um, get ready, <clears throat> learn some man keeping skills, hang out in this space and you'll be fine. I don't know how old you are. Um, but you know, five years, you held on to that relationship for five years. So there are some good things there. Right. It's some good things for you to be in a five year relationship. It's some good things there. So we need to find out what your strengths are and what what your areas of opportunity are. And why didn't this relationship uh, graduate graduate to a marriage? Was it something we didn't communicate? Did we tell them we wanted to be married? You know, did we move towards marriage? Right. Did did he even know that you wanted to be married? It's a lot of that going on, too. Uh, he asked me, what is my view on weddings? Do I feel they're an absolute must? What if a man prefers to put that money towards a nice house and a honeymoon? Ladies, at this point in time, if a man wants to marry you and he says like, look here, baby, uh, look, I got money for a house. You want the house? I got the house. You want a vehicle? I have the vehicle. You don't want to work? I got that. Um, he's giving you what you want. But he's seeing the logic in skipping the wedding and putting that towards the other things that you desire. Ladies, you may have to bend a little bit. And in my particular situation, um, I felt like we don't have to have a large wedding, but I just, there are certain things I do want that I'm not going to compromise on. The other stuff I can compromise on. I don't need fresh flowers. It's October. Some people criticize that, but they were sitting there criticizing me while they were eating filet mignon at my wedding. You see what I'm saying? So I decided, look, my guests eating top-notch food, uh, I think they had salmon or chicken. Oh, I think it was salmon. Was a salmon and filet mignon. I think it was some type of fish, and then it was filet mignon. I said, "I it's October, and I know I would be paying through the nose for some flowers that after the ceremony they'll get trampled on, they'll go to waste, and but the food people will be talking about the food from years to come." So I said, "I will." put the money in the food other than the flowers. That was a decision I made. Now, had it been the summer, it probably would have been a little bit different. I probably would have, um, Tony and I probably would have put a lot of money into the flowers too. But I was like, no, nah, I want my guests to eat. I want the best cake. I want the best food. That was a decision I made. But ladies, um, you, you may need to make some concessions, right? For some people just you know, I'm not a glutton for spending a whole lot of money when I don't have to. That's that's stupid. I put my money where I wanted it to put it in my dress and the food <laughs> and the venue. That's I wanted it to look. I want my photos to look nice. But ladies, if he's saying, you know, we can get married right now and I'm put you in a house and a car and girl, if you don't go down there to that justice of peace and shut your mouth and get that man on papers, what? Have I taught you anything? What are you doing? <laughs> Don't prolong that. <laughs> well, Miss Nicole, I want a big wedding. You can, you can go back and have a big wedding. My aunt um, in Texas, she didn't have a, well, I take that back. She did have a big wedding, <laughs> but on the fifth anniversary, they had a uh, they had a small little reception, and she said, "If I had to do it all over again, I would have had the small reception that we had for the five year anniversary for the wedding, and then we would have had the wedding for the five year anniversary." But, ladies, you could do what you want. I'm just saying, all of these um, big weddings, spending thousands of dollars, and then they're in divorce court in less than two years away. Like it's crazy. So if you have a man that sees the logic in saying, Hey, you know, 
I want to take the money and put it in the house and the vehicle and hey, take that. Or you can pay for the wedding yourself. That's another option. So he pays for the house and the car and relocating you and all that. And you pay for the wedding. I mean, ladies, look, all of you will not be able to mar marry Rockefeller. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. So when you find a, a man that says, look, I, I, I'm ready to do this. Let's do this. And you're sitting up here talking about, well, he needs to spend this and he needs to spend that. Look here. Like one of my clients, lover to death. Uh, <laughs> she was like, Mr. Cole, I want this kind of ring. And I said, shh, he's going to get you the ring. Just chill out. Just chill out. When you go shop, you tell him what kind of ring you want. He'll get you what you want. And of course, he got her a ring and it was all blinged out. But ladies, don't panic. You know what I mean? Don't panic. And she got the ring she wanted. Um. So it, it, you know, guys know what you want. They do, but sometimes we will have to make mm -hmm, negotiations. The happy housewife. Thanks for the super chat, baby. Love the honesty and balanced advice you give to women. Well, thank you so very much. I appreciate your class in my space. I appreciate that. Uh, she said, dang, that's deep. Thank you for this. This is crazy. I need to just walk away at this point. You do what you feel you need to do. But ladies, time is of the essence with us. It is. And so if those five things aren't in place, you have your answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? We need to be in situations that serve us, that benefit us. Because trust and believe being... They claim they don't stay, they, men will claim or make the assertion that they stay in relationships that don't serve them. What they leave out is they are willing to do that with women that they are sexually attracted to. They will not do that with a woman that they don't feel is their dream girl. Women are not, men are not staying in relationships and marriages with women that they are not attracted to, that they don't love, and that, that she's not their dream girl. That's the part they leave out. They'll say, oh, I loved her so. I gave her everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What does she do for a living? Well, I mean, she used to be on the pole, but see, I love her. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm done. Moving on. <laughs> They never tell you the whole story. <laughs> they only tell you what, you know, to get sympathy, to get the women, the other women to turn on her. Oh, my God. She mistreated a good man. Oh, Lord. Okay, so she was a drug addict and she was a strip. Okay, so you want sympathy? I'm I'm confused. Why do you want sympathy? Like, ladies, we have to start telling these men they need to choose better. You know? Latina Jones. Hi, how are you? Why is he more interested in having a baby without an engagement? I told him, I want marriage in a house. He said, okay, but talks about babies still. So this is an easy one. And thank you for allowing me to mentor you really quick here. This is real easy. I did a video about two, three weeks back when I said, understanding a man's offer. When a man is making an offer to you, you have to listen to it, okay? He's more interested in having a baby without an engagement. An engagement means an, intent, an, um, an intention to marry. You told him you want marriage and a house and then a baby, but he keeps on insisting on the baby. His offer, if you choose to accept, is baby mama. That's his offer to you. He's not offering you wife status. He's not offering you housewife. He's not offering you trophy wife. What other wife shall call it? Uh, wife period. He's offering you baby mama status. And that is your offer if you choose to accept. So now the court, the ball is back in your court, baby. If you want to accept that. Um, she said, we don't live together and we've been together 14 months. 
sounds like his mom was not a wife. Sounds like his mom was a baby mama too. Sounds like he did not have a father in his life. I'm sorry if that sounds really kind of, yeah. but it does. It sounds like he did not have a father. Um, it sounds like his parents weren't married. That's what this sounds like. And that's what he's comfortable with. Uh, um, and so that's when you start talking about marriage and a house, that, that's responsibility. And he wants the ability to keep you in one place with that baby while he gets to move around. Because, see, once you have the baby, guess who's the primary caregiver? You. Guess who gets stuck with the baby when he says, ah, oh, this isn't for me. Ah, oh, things have changed. You're not feminine anymore. You don't give me enough time. Guess who gets stuck with the baby? You. So that's what he's offering. He's offering you, hey, I'll be a baby daddy. And that's about as much as you can get. Oh, wait, guess who has to track down the other person for support? You. So if, you know, a lot of guys, they do that. And if his parents weren't married and they did all that, guess what? Marriage and a house and relation, you know, marriage, a house, a that means responsibility. He's not used to that. He didn't see that. He doesn't understand it. That's responsibility. And so he's going to talk you out of that as much as possible. Get rid of him like a fungus. I don't normally tell women to do this, but marry before you carry. Simple as that. And he's trying to trap you with a baby. But it's really not a trap because he's kind of telling you what it is. So I'm just saying, ladies, I'm just saying, baby. Don't come back up here with no baby and no ring because you get stuck with that. And it's hard out here for single women. I put some article links in the description box telling you ladies, I'm always posting stuff in the app. Um, and I'm telling you ladies, it's, it's getting rough. See, this is election year. Those of you listening to this on the playback years from now, this is year 2024. This is an election year. So they never want to talk about the economy if they don't have to and right now they like to focus on everything but the economy because they don't want you to know how bad it is it's bad and women raising children alone are going to catch the brunt of it and these guys want to be one foot in with you and another foot out here in these streets don't let him do that to you okay don't let him do that to you don't let him saddle you with a baby out here so he gets to run around and go childless to another woman see and then you saddle with a baby now a man has to look at you twice do i want to take on this single mother with children sure there are men out there that may marry a woman with children but why would you make it harder for yourself don't let him saddle you with a baby don't let him do that to you Pretty Brown Eyes says, I hope this doesn't sound crazy, but my daughter's father's family practices their spirituality, uh, their spiritual beliefs. Do you think that his hate can cause issues in my relationship since I'm no longer with him? Mm. I hope he's not using religion to string you along because it's a lot of guys out here these whole teppers that will use religion. And I said what I said, these whole teppers using religion. And I said what I said, because y'all, y'all, you all criticize the Christian church. So I definitely can criticize you with my whole chest. You whole teppers will string women along for years and not marry them. Talk about that polygamy crap, talking about how she shouldn't expect money. She needs to be, and they are so big on submission, by the way. And they will talk about the Christian church, but excuse me, the last I checked, Christian preachers who step out of line, we ridicule them like no other. You talk about somebody that'll go viral, let a preacher step, step out of bounds. We will go viral dragging him for filth. And you know this is true. How many preachers have we drugged for filth? And I'm saying we, as in the public, have drugged for filth because of rumors, innuendos, photos, inappropriate behavior, uh, outfits they wore. That's the Christian church. So if you all can criticize the Christian church, I can criticize hoteps with my whole chest. And let me tell you, they hate, they don't like talking about Jesus. They talk about sky daddies, but you all are the worst when it comes to treating women. You mistreat women like no other and you're broke. 
and you don't have businesses and you don't have anything to leave your children. Can I just go out for just one second? Thank you for leading me down this road. You all have no money no social status no standing anything a woman wants is trying to be like white people anything a woman wants is trying to be uh uh non-black anything a woman wants that is away from poverty you ridicule her for and that's because you don't have it to give her so you have to convince her and gaslight her into believing that wanting more is bad that's whole tips for you that's why i say they're not good they're not good. Israel, uh, Israel, all, all of them. They're not good because what they do is talk you out of being better. And when women come out of these sex and these cults, when they come out of it, they go, oh, and they want to say that the black church is keeping people single. Um, I came out of the black church and I'm not married. I've had women in my chat. They go to church every Sunday. Their husbands are pastors. They're uh, husbands are pastors i have one lady in my chat i don't know if she's here now she might be in the clouds her husband built her and they met and they go to church and love jesus christ and he built her a house from the ground up nobody has ever lived on that property ever built it ground up i don't know how many hotel men are doing that for their wives sorry but i don't so anyway with that being said um, don't let men use spirituality to, uh, talk you out of having a good life. Just don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't. Please don't do that. Not in my space. If I find that they're whole teppers, I'm going off. What? You let a whole temper do that to you? Girl. And, and, and they love making promises. They love making promises to women. Oh, I'm going to build this. I'm going to do this for the community. I'm going to do, and it's like years for that. If it ever happens, I'm sorry. It happens, but I'm sorry. My grandfather said he was going to build a church and he built it in his lifetime. Some folks are walking around here, hotep, 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 and we don't see anything yet. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, if you criticize the church, I get to criticize you back. Like you put a micro, a, a micro, a, a microscope on us, we'll put a microscope on you. That's that's just how that is. So I'm saying that don't let people you, and that goes for any religious group, whether it's Christian, Muslim, Catholic. Don't let spirituality keep you from where you're supposed to be. Because your relationship is supposed to be with the Lord, not with them, right? Uh, uh, your relationship should be separate, the Lord and then them. But don't let them either talk you out of having a relationship or using religion or spirituality to keep you from a better life. Because they sure, like... Uh, um, I saw a documentary about these people. Uh, they had these movements of people living off the grid. And just so you know, on YouTube, I, and I don't know if Tony likes it, but he sits there and watches it with me. When I'm falling asleep, they're, um, they're building these cabins in the middle of nowhere. And it's snowing on the ground. And they're in this cabin. And they have the fireplace going. And it just relaxes me, right? It's weird. Don't judge. So I'm watching it. And... And I'm, and I'm like, there, there's a whole movement of people going off the grid because they don't like social media. They don't like AI. They don't like all of these things. So they go off the grid. There are women. And, and I think this was Pergus, uh, some, some country over there in Eastern Europe, right? And they're in the middle of nowhere in this little bitty cabin. And they're not even married. And she's out there in 20 below weather out there helping him put this tent up. It wasn't even a cabin, you all. It was a, a, a tent. And she's out there. In a, first of all, I looked at her hand. I said, is she married to be doing all this? She Listen, you think American men make women jump through? <laughs> I was like 20 below. Um, I don't need you that much. I'll get over you. Uh, 20 below? Um, No, thank you. But anyway, he must have had some money because his car was nice. And I, I guess, I guess uh, rich people do stuff like that. <laughs> Just, what are you? What? Oh, my God. See, when I think rich, I think, you know, luxury cabin, you know, ski slopes. Right. I don't think tent 
and a hot stove. I just, I don't think that. But anyway, she's out there and she's helping him pitch this tent in the middle of nowhere in a 20 below snowstorm, a 20 below blizzard. Um, the things people will go through or go to the links that they will go to to get a man. Uh, hey, so a lot of men will put you through to see if that's you. And it's, it's up to you if you want to go through all those changes with men. I just think when he wants you and you're his dream girl, you don't have to do all that. And I'm, look, look I'm not paying tax more than I need to pay. Look, I knew I was going to pay the old lady tax. And I knew I was going to have to pay the, uh, pay the divorcee with kids tax. But you're not going to charge me fat girl tax because I'm not a fat girl. You're not going to charge me ugly tax because I'm not ugly. And uh, but to some guy, he would charge me. Uh, you're not my dream girl tax. I'm not paying that. At my age, no, I'm not doing that. I don't have to be with. I, look, I'm going to get with the guy who thinks I'm his dream girl. That's how that works. You all, y'all want to go get with the Fabios and the uh, uh, listen, the Jason Momoa. Shout out to Jason Momoa. But listen, Jason Momoa is going to charge you tax. You don't think Lisa Bonet had to pay old lady tax? Oh, he loved on her real good. But don't think she did not have to pay her old lady tax. The old lady tax cometh. <laughs> and I was, I was determined. Look, I know I have to pay my tax. But what I won't do is be with somebody that's going to pay, you know. And, and, and the funny thing, lady is, ladies, is it could be a man your age that will charge you the old lady tax. That's what's crazy. Shay Nerd, she says, what if a man says that he is an he is in an open relationship and has two serious girlfriends. <sighs> you lost me at open relationship girl, but okay. I don't like sharing, so I can't even fathom women who share men, but hey, I'm gonna go ahead and indulge you and believes a man can have more than one woman as long as he can handle it. Um, so basically he gets to have more women, but you all have to share him. You don't get to have more men. Why? Why? You should ask him, can I have another man? Why are you the only one that gets to have somebody else on the side? And he's going to come with some spirituality crap. And he's going to say, oh, this is the divine and uh, whatever. So if I see uh, Jason Momoa out and I want to, you know, he can get it. No, spirituality, he's going to go quoting some scripture that misapplies some scripture. And he's going to tell you how you need to be submissive and whatever whatever does your money match what you're asking me to do because don't even part your lips to ask me to do something and your money does not match you're asking me to do a threesome does your money match well you ought to be glad i would really i ought to be glad i'm with you but the thing is if you could do better than me you would but you can't so therefore if you're asking me to do a threesome your money needs to match that don't even partially see you all that do this kind of stuff need to start popping back at these dudes. Does your money match what you're asking me to do? No. Okay. Next subject. Well, what does money have to a lot? You're asking me to do something I don't want to do. Now I would be persuaded to do it if the money was right. I mean, those of you who do that kind of stuff, I don't share, but those of you who do, does your money match? Why are we talking about this? Your money doesn't match. You want another woman. Why? You can't afford me. What are we doing? Uh, you don't get rewarded for being broke. Ladies, stop rewarding men for being broke and mediocre. Like beneath, we are working class, working poor. Why are we talking about threesomes? I'm sorry. That's not our subject. That's not your subject, sir. Why are broke men allowed to cheat? That's, uh, uh, you don't have money. Okay, you don't have money. You have to float checks until payday. Why are we talking about another woman? That's not you, player. Okay, like sorry, I hit the mic, y'all. Um, that's not you. Uh, uh. Your money must match what you're asking me. You will be adding on tax to yourself, exactly, ladies. Yeah, 
good point, Didi. She says you'll be adding on tax to yourself unnecessarily with a baby. Absolutely, because that single mother tax is a beast. A lot of you ladies out here, what these ladies tell you, oh, don't listen to Nicole and them tell you you can't find a man with who will take a single mother. Right. And what they don't tell you is, um, one, you pay less tax if he already has children or if he's a divorcee with children. They don't tell you that. Uh, if they're good at that, if their job, they will tell you that to get a man that has children because that offsets the tax. But if you're going out with a man who does not have children and you do, he is going to tax you. They don't tell you that. They might not know to tell you that, but I'm telling you that. He's going to tax you. He's going to make you jump through hoops. Happy flower basket. Hi. She says, I love my fiance, but you're right. His mother was a baby mama and didn't have a dad growing up. I'm not working and I have the housewife life while I'm pregnant, but he's too stuck on a wedding. Um, you can have a wedding now. See, he didn't say what kind of wedding. You can have a wedding in the backyard. You can have a wedding at the lake. You can have a wedding on the beach. He didn't say. And I want you to propose a wedding. Hey, say, hey, we can have a wedding on the beach. And see what he says. If he starts to humming a, what other, uh, uh, so is it about the wedding or are you just trying to pro prolong this? That should be your question. He can pay bills, but he doesn't want to just go ahead and get married like a husband. A lot of that might be how he grew up. I can guarantee you. Uh, um, she said her father believes ATRS and dabble in magic. Um, seeing him do it when I was with him, I'm no longer with him. So I hope that's uh, not affecting my relationships now. Ooh, when you come out of that, you need to go somewhere to totally cleanse yourself of that energy. That's all I'm going to say there. Get rid of that energy. Can he buy houses for both girlfriends and wives? Probably not. Most of the men talking about polygamy don't have a dime, a nickel, uh, uh, or a bucket to throw the nickel in. They don't have anything. <laughs> they don't have, as my mother would say, they don't have a pot to... P-I-S-S-N or a window to throw it out of. They don't have any of that, but they're going to try to gaslight you into doing some crap that only benefits his ego. Why must I sacrifice my self-esteem and my self-worth for your ego? No, we're not doing that. We do not have money like that. You are disrespectful to even bring that up to me and your bank account looks the way it does. Please understand you need to bring him down back down to earth. First of all, your bank account does not reflect what you're asking me. You are not Michael B. Jordan. Let's get that clear. You're not Michael Jordan or Michael B. Jordan. And so therefore, you need to get that out of your head until you get either one of them's kind of money. Do you have Michael Jordan money? Michael B. Jordan money? <laughs> You don't even have 1% of their money. And you want me to sacrifice my self-esteem for you, for your ego? Uh-uh. That's too hot price. Of, that's, you're asking me to pay a higher price than you're paying. Well, how, well you know, your, your price should be money. But you don't have that. But you still want me to pay a price. I'm paying a price emotionally by sharing my man. I'm paying emotionally with my self-esteem, myself, because that's going to hurt. And you want me to pay that price, but you're not, you don't have the money to pay your price. Yeah, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, yeah, no. Ladies, you need to learn how to shut that down all the way down. Don't even come to me and your money's not right. Just no. Talk to me on your socioeconomic level. Don't talk above your pay grade. That's, that's not you. Just say no. <laughs> Phineas said, just say, yeah, just say no, flat out. Just say no. Why? Are you asking me why? Are you sure you want me to explain why? Are you sure about that? Okay. Yeah. Explain why. Well, first of all, your bank account means no because you can't pay what your price is supposed to pay and i'm supposed to pay with my emotions and my self-esteem and my self-worth i have to pay that price you don't have to pay your price 
which is cash because you don't have it. So therefore we can't do this because you know, it's lopsided, the payments there. Oh, so this is about money? Yes. Most things in life is about money. If you haven't figured that out, you're not ready for me. Uh, you just all about the money. Mm. That's weird coming from somebody who just asked me to lower my self self-respect and, and share and share my man. That's weird coming from you. So you have to learn how to pop back. And if he gets to the point where he's hemming in a horn and he wants to get violent and he wants to, uh-uh, it's time to go. You obviously are not ready for the big leagues. You think this is high school. This is grown people. You're asking me to lay my emotions down to appease your ego. That's We're not doing that. And ladies, these whole tappers, let them, look, I you, you, yeah, you were yelling and screaming at me about the white man this and the white man that. Why don't you get some money and come talk to me? Because right now you're talking above your pay grade. Again, you're talking working poor conversations. And right now we're in adult conversations. We're, we're in middle class conversations. And right now that is not for me. So you don't have to yell. You don't have to get violent. You don't have to start being condescending. I'm just telling you that's not going down. It's not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That church is keeping you single. Really? How so? When's the last time you've been? Has the pastor asked you for anything? Well, no, but I'm just saying, how is it keeping me single? I'm with you, aren't I? Well, yeah, it's keeping you. How? You're not asking me to marry you because I go to church? Because if that's the case, then yeah, it is keeping me single. So how is it keeping me single? So you go down, down to that church with that? Yes, I do. When's the last time you've been? 1982 Easter? Huh? Like... You haven't been in 30 years, but you want to tell me about what's keeping me single. I, you know, seriously, ladies, <laughs> a lot of this rhetoric that you hear online and, and it's sad to hear women regurgitating that, especially when um, a lot of people need God. <laughs> you, if you ever needed the Lord before, you sure do need him now. And I look sideways at women that teach femininity. They teach um, um, coaching. Um, they teach wellness. They teach anything that has to do with women getting better. And they're constantly putting women down about Christianity. Why do you put them down about Christianity and not anything else? It's just that religion. So it sounds like that's personal. And it sounds like you shouldn't be teaching. Because if that is where I get my wholeness and my fulfillment, then why are you putting that down? Sounds personal. Ladies, we need to learn how to filter the information that comes to us and be wise and cut people off. Take the meat, throw the bone back. <laughs> yes, and then sometimes uh, women will accept this kind of behavior and then they will get online and episode number 56 episode number 95 episode number 169 episode 1562 telling us how some dusty got over on them because they accepted some crap and i'm telling you ladies to recognize a no look we've gone on three hours I appreciate you ladies so, so very much. If you're on the app, I will go ahead and upload the tax episode because <laughs> I, I think I privated it. it. Um, and that's because I want to do something else with that. But um, I need ladies to understand your tax. And if you don't understand your tax, it's hard for you to move out here. And a lot of women are wasting a lot of time Y'all want to be fried. Listen, I'm going to tell you why women in the church are single. Can I be honest? And then I'm going to log off. The women in the church are single because they're all trying to be first lady. That's why. I said it. They're all trying to be first lady. They all want to be uh, with the status. And um, they all want to, you know, be uh, the leader and all that. They all want to be with the alpha. The alpha is the pastor. They want to be with him. I got it. I get it, right? It's intoxicating. You're looking at him. He's handsome and all this and all that. I get it. But all of you all are not going to be first lady. 
And some women want to be the side piece of the pastor or the preacher. And then they can't pull that off either because some people, some, uh, it's just it's it's too much he already has a rotation he's doing something else or maybe he's just a man of god and he just doesn't have a rotation whatever the case may be she's not uh, close enough to the man and the other guys in the church are not the head honcho which is why a lot of men don't go to the church now because they feel like the pastor is getting all the boom boom so that's why the men don't go and the women are still going because they know on a subconscious level and on a spiritual level, they need God. But a lot of them are fighting for first first lady status or they're fighting to be the side piece of the first, uh, the pastor, or they're trying to get close enough to the pastor's wife to break up the pastor and his wife. I've seen that firsthand. My grandmother was a first lady and she had a couple of friends try to get close to her so they could get close to my grandfather. I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. And let me tell you, those women, you think that they're all looking like Tisa. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. The ladies in the church, baby, look like video girls with dresses on. Let me tell you something. You haven't been to church recently. Those women in the church look like... <laughs> <laughs> they, they, look you all think they look like tisa bless her heart they don't they look like video girls and uh a lot of these gospel singers have groupies and so a lot of these women try to get close to the first lady so they could get close to the pastor y'all don't know the game try to befriend the first lady and then work your way into the pastor huh she'll never suspect it um, oh yeah, somebody said that's ruthless. Oh yes, honey. Don't sleep on the church, girls. <laughs> you think they all look like older women. You think that, right? You think like they're all in the kitchen with batter all over their face? No. Um, and so they'll get close to the preacher and then tear up that marriage. And a lot of them don't even want the preacher. That's that's the crazy part. Of course they don't want them. So Jezebel's spirit. Jezebel's spirit is divisive. Um, and so they'll just work their way on through that. And then boom, tear up that marriage. And then next thing you know, he's single. He's out here, he's out here doing his thing. And again, all of these women are single. People, and let me help you with this, and then I'm really gonna be out. But a lot of people think that women in the church want to be married. And that's where you get it confused. I'm just going to leave that right there. <laughs> a lot of you think that a lot of the women in church want to be married. Some of them, they want your man. They don't want to be married. They want a man. They might want your man. But they don't necessarily want to be married. And that's where you get it mixed up. The church is just another stop on the way to the club the church is another stop on the way before they go get high or the church is another stop on the way before they go do whatever they're doing or the church is just another place where horny dudes with money are that's how they look at it and so a lot of women are going because that's what they want you 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 mistake it there are some women that love god and they're doing right but then it is a group of women that go because those guys are going to be enamored with her. She's, she's, you know, not from the church and she's a little wild and, you know, she's going to turn him out. And when she turns him out, he's going to open up the floodgates with his pockets. And then, you know, that's old. So don't get that idea. Ooh, let me go start going to church. Um, that's old. They've been doing that since before I was born. That's an old little trick that doesn't work anymore. Even the guys in the church have rotations, just so you know. So when you see a whole lot of guys that are older and they don't have wives and they go to church, please understand they have a rotation. And it takes my husband to break down the type of women that they have in their rotation. So, I, you know, Tony and I might do like maybe a podcast uh, episode on that. Breaking down the types of women. Actually, if you're in Patreon, Tony and I have two episodes already. And we actually talk about the church. 
Um, but we might do a, a podcast where Tony breaks down the type of women that are in rotation with the guys at church because it's Tony's um, philosophy that the guys in the church are tricking too. And I was like, wow, that's, that's, so a lot of times, a lot of women are in dire straits financially. And so the guys in the church are playing that game too. So now you understand why a lot of men that go to church are single. <laughs> because they're out here playing games too. So I just, you know, but when we talk about, we only, when we talk about the church, we only talk about why are the women single? We never talk because see, I don't jump on women that go to church because I know how these guys get down at the church too. The guys are doing the most too. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's that the Patreon link should be in the description box. You can go ahead and, um, sign up for that. And I have to reconstruct the Patreon and redo that. So you ladies can come in. And those of you who want to hear the tax episode that will be on in the, um, on the app. And I will see if you have your notifications turned on, you'll get a notification later today stating that the video is available. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, definitely send me a message by IG. Yes, IG. <laughs> send me a message um, and I will look into it. I will look into it. But I definitely want to talk about emotionally unavailable women coming up soon. But that tax video, that's that's too much game in one video. And I want ladies that are serious and understand the gravity of what I'm giving you to understand that understanding your taxes is huge. Mary J. Blige didn't understand her taxes. Uh, a lot of people in the ind entertainment industry share. She knows her taxes. Chris Kardashian knows her taxes. Don't think Chris Kardashian is, isn't offsetting her taxes, but she knows, and she knows she's paying a tax, but she knows, and she knows how to play and pay her taxes. See, most women won't even know that they're paying taxes and they think it's just older men just don't want them. No, you just have to understand the taxes you're paying. Oh, you think younger women are being harder on you? No, sir. You're just being charged tax. That's all it is. Thank you so much, everybody. Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the faith, everybody.